So guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first session of the 2022 edition. I'm thrilled really to be here today again, even if we cannot do it yet physically, we're gonna have to uh, do it Zoom still. Uh, I'm super excited. I'll, I'll tell you why after because of, uh, I mean, it's selling also will share some points. And um, let's get started. Selin, it's yours. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Celina Becasis Muedas. I'm the uh, I'm a professor at Catolica, and I'm the academic director for the Center for Technological Innovation and Entrepreneurship, which is sponsored by the Patrick and Lina Drahi Foundation. We thank them for their support. It's been a, a, a five year support. Um, and we have achieved a lot through that. I want to thank Pierre a lot for um, his uh, work to put together this forward program, as he will tell you in more detail in, in a minute. The forward program is the second edition. So, you know, when you start something, it's like a, it's like a startup. And when it's a second time, you know, it means that there was enough success in, in, in the first one. Actually, the success that I want to share is that uh, last year, again, first edition of the forward, the company that won the, the forward or that we yeah, that won the forward um, was uh, very successful apart from us. They won the Altis Innovation Award, which is a little bit more than what you can win at Catolica. So the award at Catolica, which I have to say we're still very proud of, is 1,000 euros in cash plus help to uh, incubation. Uh, but the Altis Innovation Award is 50,000 euros in cash. So I, you know, I understand that they are probably even more proud from winning the other award than starting with us. But in a way, uh, Pierre and I were saying that we're very proud of the good eye that we have, we as a jury in general, we as an institution, Catolica and the center, that we uh, uh, pre-checked um, this, uh, this great project before it was uh, checked by others. So uh, in a way, um, uh, uh, being, being seen by the center and by the forward is the, is the path to so much more. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit more about the, the center. So the center is something that uh, we founded uh, five years ago, Pierre and I. Um, as I said before, it's sponsored by Patrick and Lida Drahe Foundation. Patrick Drahe is now the owner of uh, Altis um, and, and, and many more um, other telecom companies. And we do three types of things. One is that we support research. So we support the research that I do, but also that two other researchers do. We support uh, teaching activities. And uh, I see some familiar faces here that were in my innovation and design course uh, this year and last year. So as you know, a part of, uh, of, the, of the course and particularly the simulator is sponsored by, by the center. And third, we do, um, uh, you know, we connect the students of Catolica with the, um, the ecosystem of entrepreneurship in, in Lisbon through this program, the forward, through the partnership with Startup Lisboa, and through many other things. We give uh, different awards for uh, research in this area and for um, a startup project in this area as well. So in a nutshell, that's, it. that's what the Catolica Center for Technological Innovation and Entrepreneurship does. And this forward is a great, great initiative. I want you please to thank me to thank Pierre for his great work. Please, you know, we're clapping for Pierre. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to see you all here. Uh, as I said before, you know, we started last year, we had a few projects last year, but we're super proud and super excited to have a, a second edition. There's a, a, a bunch of students from Catolica Portuguese, German, and lots of different nationalities and different backgrounds. And that's the richness of, of, uh, of those backgrounds that makes the, the great, that will um, make it a great outcome for the future. So without further ado, I pass it to Pierre, who's gonna present in more detail uh, how it's gonna work. And I want to already thank the different people who support us, the Tech at Catolica, the BET, uh, and the different uh, sponsors and mentors who are giving us their time, uh, dedication, and great experience. So thank you, everybody. We're clapping again for all that you're doing to support us. Thank you, and Pierre, it's yours. Thank you very much, Celine. Thank you for the intro. So guys, welcome back here. Uh, this is what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna be going through uh, who is who. We started with Celine. I introduced myself, and after we're gonna move to um, 
the senior bodies will share with you about the organization, how things are going to work during the, until the demo day. We're going to have a break. And after we're going to be, uh, you will be pitching your idea to everyone. So you can get the first feedback and, uh, and uh, orientation. And after we'll go through the next steps. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. In terms of um, the difference with this year and why I'm excited is because we have um, the participation of, and I will explain in a little bit detail after, of what we call senior buddies. Senior buddies for this edition are a number of people, and I'll share that with you now, who are these people. So they are here. And it's actually always changing, but I think I stabilized the number now. And uh, we are very uh, privileged to have these people with us. Number one, they are all, all alumni uh, from Catholica, okay? And they all contributed uh, uh, to, um, they, they all have actually um, a great a relevant career that they will share after. And they're gonna be your senior mentor for the rest of the program. So I'll explain after how it works, but basically we will link each team with one senior mentor. Some of these people today are not currently online, okay? And they will perhaps join us later. But the idea was to uh, have them presenting themselves. And let me check on my, um, my messages. And we're gonna start with the people that are here uh, online. And I think the only one we have currently is Joaquin. Joaquin, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, of course. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm an old alumni from Catolica. I did uh, the economics uh, uh, major uh, then. And, and um, afterwards, I did some, some some other courses in, in Catholica. Namely, I did my, my MBA, uh, major marketing, uh, and other, other, other stuff. Uh, lately, I have been uh, involved in, the, in other programs, uh, data science, and also uh, on uh, RGPD, which is the, the privacy of uh, the, our, our uh, own data. So uh, I have... Uh, 32, 33 years uh, of uh, uh, experience, uh, mainly in the telco industry and uh, lately in the mobility sector. So um, I started in a company that uh, no longer exists, which is called Marconi. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you guys don't, don't remember because this, this is a very old company. But the, the inventor of the TSF uh, was Mar Guglielmo Marconi, uh, an Italian. Maybe you, you know them. Um, then I moved for Portugal Telecom. Um, and afterward, I, I was involved in a, in a very nice project of a digital transformation and customer-centric approach for the guys at the Brisa group, uh, namely also with the Via Verde. Via Verde, it's the... The, the service that allows us to uh, cross all the, the tolling system in Portugal without uh, stopping. Uh, uh, that's why it's called Via Verde. Um, and then now I'm involved in another new project. By the way, it's a kind of startup. Uh, it's a fintech with Paulo, Paulo Vila Luz. Uh, and I'm very enthusiastic about the, this new project. And so, uh, I had also some, some other um, volunteer, let's say, staff. I belong to the, the executive board of the Alumni Association uh, uh, of Catholica Lisbon. Uh, I am uh, also involved in mentoring uh, young uh, university uh, people. Uh, and I did some, some other uh, things around the startups in Portugal. Uh, mentoring and also um, taking part of some boards of um, juries 
to uh, uh, appreciate some of the projects. I am married. I have uh, one child that, by the way, uh, will uh, have his 29th anniversary tomorrow. So um, after this meeting, I will rush to Lisbon because I'm 250 kilometers away in South. Uh, and that's it. I'm very enthusiastic about the, this, this new project, of course. And so, uh, you, will, you, will, you, will, can, you can count on me uh, whatever you want and whatever you need. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Joaquin. So I will, I will carry on the introduction and I will um, follow up with uh, Paulo Villaluz. Mm -hmm. So Paulo was, uh, is also an alumni from Catolica, okay? Paulo has been working uh, more than uh, 22 years at a bank called Bank BPI, okay? So he, he spent a lot of time in his career as uh, in the banking industry. He was the founder and the CEO of um, the company that I think Joachim is working with as well. It's called Thinkland. Okay. And uh, Paolo is a person that is involved uh, with the ecosystem. He was part of the business angel from Catolica. He's also mentoring a lot of initiatives and in, uh, in a number of different programs. Okay. So, uh, we are super happy to have Paolo on board uh, with this experience and also with the broader knowledge he has about the ecosystem and all the partners in the ecosystem, okay? So that's, that's Paolo. Then um, on the, um, the next person I would like to mention, and um, perhaps she will join in a few minutes after, but uh, it's um, Sofia Tenrer, the last person here on, on the pictures. And uh, Sofia is also um, an alumni from Catolica. She has been um, the Consumer Channel Group Executive Director for Microsoft. She worked for Microsoft for seven years. Then she was the General Manager for Cisco for uh, four years. And she was the COO uh, from Galp. Galp is the, one of the major companies in Portugal, and it's a petroleum company. They're trying to reinvent themselves, but they originally are a petroleum company. And Sophia worked there for two years and, and a half. Okay? She's, also board, she's also a YPO member, Young Professional Organization, and she's currently launching a private equity fund and she's um, super interested about everything that touch, touches uh, blockchain technology, smart contracts, etc. So Sofia is going to be with us um, uh, during the program, and she's going to be working with some of the um, of the teams there. Okay. Then uh, we have one more person that I would like also to introduce. Um, her name is Liliana. And Liliana uh, has been working as the VP for Global Channel Sales at uh, Sony uh, for the last, um, I think for the last, um, she's now uh, at, at, at Sony, but she has been working at Sony for more than four years before. She was the business and innovation manager at Central de Cerveja, which is a, a beer um, beverage uh, institution. And she also has a number of um, executive education um, uh, degree from INSEAD, Singularity University. Okay, and she will bring to you all this edge about uh, FMCG, but also about entertainment and the, the digital world. Okay. Then we have, um, last but not least, we have actually two alumni that worked at BCG for a large number of years. I'm going to start with Carlos. Carlos, um, besides Catolica, did his MBA at Harvard, Harvard and he worked um, as an investment banker for three years and 25 years uh, in the Boston Consulting Group. And he launched in 2021 um, a fund uh, and a, a company to help, um, you know, um, 
other companies actually uh, to bring strategic insight and local knowledge and etc. Okay, so he's using his uh, consultancy expertise uh, now uh, to uh, advise uh, firms. Okay, and last but not least, we have uh, Alexandre. So Alexandre, after Catholica, did his MBA at uh, MIT Sloan School of Management. He has been a senior partner and managing director at the VCG for 24 years. And uh, he was responsible of the um, Angola uh, Luanda office. Okay. And also he was the practice area leader for public sector in, uh, in Western Europe. He's now moving into private investor and he has his firm about private investing. So um, that's the senior buddies you have with us. Um, this is what is, this is the main differentiator from last year edition with this year is that you're going to have access to these people. These people will be working with you. And after I'll explain how it's all going to work together. Okay. So uh, any questions about uh, the senior buddies or I can move to the next slides. You guys okay? Excellent. So Next slide. So who am I? After all these people that uh, uh, we, we are welcoming here in the program. I'm the executive director of the center. I'm working with uh, Celine and um, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. I actually never worked as an engineer, but I always worked in, uh, in you know, business process redesign or implementation of systems, mainly in telco also, especially in the AirTouch group, also known as Vodafone now. And uh, my forte is about sales incentive compensation. Okay, sales incentive is about helping sales forces to get uh, the most out of their commissions when they sell specific things. I'm working with Catholica since 2010. I've been working in different uh, position at Catholica. I'm also giving, um, I'm also teaching. And one of the area I'm teaching this year is strategic management consulting projects. And I'm also very much involved with entrepreneurship classes. Okay. And I'm gonna be your host for the rest of the program. So anything that uh, you want to ask, any suggestions, any issue, you, you can drop me a mail or you can WhatsApp me. Okay, so I'm gonna be here, your host for the rest of the, of the program. And, um, and yeah, and, and, and that's it. So, um, and then I'm, I'd like to pass on to our um, supporting partners. One of the strengths of this program is that, first of all, we couldn't do that by ourselves. We have the senior mentors, the buddy mentors, we have the platform. We have, and behind each of these parts, we have clubs or we have the ecosystem from Catholica. So the first one I would like to bring um, uh, to, to ask, uh, to call on stage is uh, Pedro and, and Pedro is representing BET. BET, we did, uh, I could say, before I pass on to Pedro, the journey together, BET was created in 2012. And since then, the center, the CTA has been working very closely with BET in any initiatives that they've been doing, especially in their main we, uh, yearly initiative called BET24. So Pedro, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about BET and how you guys are gonna support the program this year? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so BET is uh, a Catholic group uh, club formed by students that want to change the mindset of basically the, the youth. They want to create an entrepreneurship mindset. And because of that, we created in 2012 this club. More specifically, uh, my department is the mentoring department. So we have three uh, of them. And this department is to help startups like yours to quick start the idea, their, their startups basically. So we are going to be with you all the process until the end of this event uh, for any kind of need, help, uh, and you want to exchange any ideas, uh, debate, anything, you can call us. We are, we are always uh, ready to help you guys. Um, uh, basically, 
um, we are going to help you guys with the validation and the product market fit and the MVP. These are probably the main three things that we are going to work on in this event, in this forward uh, event. And we are here to help you guys with this process. Um, so to talk a bit about me, um, I'm my second year in my bachelor's in business administration at Catolica. Uh, this is my second time doing this event with Pierre. Uh, so last year, I also took part on this event and it was like a very enjoyable event and I believe it went very well. Um, and I'm very honored to, to be asked to do this again. And hopefully my startup wins this competition and we can always celebrate at the end. And yeah, for sure that's going to happen. Um, now to present the rest of my team. Um, so we are a team of um, eight people. And today I believe we are going to be six here because two of them couldn't make it. So, but to start with, I would, I'd like to call Mike. Uh, just say a quick word about him and for everyone to meet the team. Yeah, I'm Mike from the Netherlands. I'm also studying at Catholica. Your mic doesn't work, Mike. <laughs> What I propose, Pedro, is I have a, I have a slide for the presentation after, and Mike can look at his microphone, and after we'll jump in um, in okay, the okay. slide. Can it be? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll do that. So, Mike, Mike, you have perhaps to restart your computer or your mic, and after you you get back on board. Okay. Any additional points, Pedro? You want to add? No. Uh, so, if you print, uh, we are going to divide the startups and teams uh, to. Buddy mentor, so two people from the vet are going to work with you uh, through this process. So, besides the senior mentor, we are going to have like two buddy mentors, and we are very honored and excited to be part of this event. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Pedro. Then the second uh, supporting um, club is Tech at Catolica. So. Uh, I'll do the introduction for Tech at Catolica. Tech at Catolica are a club that was created in uh, 2016. And basically what these guys are doing is um, they want to bring awareness of the importance of technology in the business world. And they believe that more and more technology will be playing uh, an important role in all the decision process, in all the, you know, the relationship we have with people, with with uh, with um, content, and etc. So they decided to create this uh, this club, and um, they do a uh, few things that are relevant for you guys, for the students. Number one, they organize tech lunch. So tech lunch are uh, lunches or brown bags that we would call that, where they invite relevant people from the industry, where they can share their knowledge. So it happens on data science, it happens on a, uh, artificial intelligence and other topics. Okay, so they do that, they invite people and you have uh, Q and A's with the, with the participating students. The second thing that these guys are doing, they're doing um, coding classes and uh, the, the, their objective is for you guys or the, the participating uh, students to uh, build a project using R, using Python, and uh, on the top of a software cool, called uh, DataCamp. Okay, so they have um, a group dealing with that. And the last thing uh, that perhaps is more relevant or more visible is once a year, they, they organize a hackathon. And this year, the hackathon is planned for April 23rd, April 23rd. And basically, they're going to have different track. They're going to have sponsors, and um, it's going to be it's going to be physical. So it's going to be the first time since the COVID we're going to be all together in one room. And uh, I'm looking forward. The, the center again will be one of the of the sponsor for that. These guys this year are, are new joining the forward uh, pre accelerator program. What do they do, and why did they join? because they have specific competency on the technical part and they are the ones, especially uh, a person called Manuel, 
are the ones that have been um, setting up the Discord server and all the permissions, etc. I'll get there uh, on time after on, on a specific slide. But basically, the contribution is on the technology part, on, on the server and helping us with that. OK? So that's about this, guys. The next one uh, that uh, is uh, supporting us is Startup Lisbo. Startup Lisbo is the main incubator here uh, in Lisbon. They were created in 2012, OK? And since then, um, their impact on the ecosystem in Lisbon has been tremendous, OK? Um, they have different programs. They help uh, entrepreneurs. They also have uh, they also have even um, kind of a hotel where entrepreneurs can come and, and, and spend some time before they find their final accommodation. So they have a lot of um, other initiatives. We are, the center is part of the board of Startup Lisboa. So we have Celine, the person that did the intro at the beginning, is part of the board of Startup Lisboa. So we've, we're working very closely with these guys and we can articulate a lot of, you know, um, synergies together. What are they doing this year with us? So they're gonna provide mentors. They will be part of the, of the demo day at the end, but specifically and, and more important for you, they will fast track applications to their uh, incubator program. So for the startup that they believe, for, for example, the winner or perhaps other startup, that they believe have um, um, the, the materials to get incubated, they will fast track the process so you can join the incubator. Behind Startup Lisbo, you have other initiatives. You have Casado Impact for the projects that are more um, uh, for impact. You also have uh, Health Tech Lisbo for the projects that are more health related. So Startup Lisbo is kind of the type tip of the iceberg, and after you have different flavor that we can uh, pick and use for you guys in the program, okay? So if you want uh, more about Startup Digital, you can check on their website. If you want to get into, in, in touch with them, we're gonna have uh, them in the next session and, and then introduce them to you, okay? So that's, that's the partners. Any questions about that before I move to a little bit more technical slide? No. So. Pierre. Yeah. We already have Paulo on board, so I don't know if you. Ah, excellent. Paulo, welcome. Yeah. So I'll I'll put you here. Paulo, I was trying to make up for your intro. Sorry, I'm, I may have missed a lot of things. So since you're here now, can you please share with us uh, some of your experience and tell us who you are, please? Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Sorry, Saturday is a difficult day. I have a, a lunch show, so I, I'm I'm Paul Vilouz, as you said. I mix. Uh, I have a lot of experience in banking, but in banking, I had uh, I have launched several projects and uh, all related related with channels and digital. And uh, since 2014, I have my, my own startup. It's a fintech. And uh, I have also participated with Catolica with the launch of uh, Business Angel uh, uh, Business Angel Company. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'm very interested in this ecosystem of startups and, uh, uh, and it's a uh, a pleasure to be in this in this this place. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, um, thank you, Paulo. Wait. So thank you, Paulo, uh, for the intro and welcome on board. So let me move forward. This is where I was here. Yeah, let me see which slide I have here. So, exactly. So, how it's going to work, and, and, and I'd like to spend a little bit more time here on, on this slide to tell you how we're going to be working together. 
So this year we have six teams. Okay. We decided to cut a little bit from last year. And also uh, yesterday night or the night before I received an email that the teams, we had seven teams originally selected and one of them couldn't make it because of the workload. So we're going to have six teams. So the teams will be working during all the program with two types of mentors. They're going to have the senior mentors. So if you remember, senior mentors are these people here, Joaquin, Paolo, and the others that are presented. And then the team also will be linked with two buddy mentors. That's what Pedro from Beth mentioned. So during all the duration of the program, from now on to uh, middle of May, you're going to have direct access to these people. Okay, And I think this is really the differentiator with other programs because these guys are going to help you to push it. You're going to ask questions and you're not going to be alone in your you know, journey to making that a success. On the other side, we're going to have a number of industry mentors. So what is my job here? My job is that for the next session, the session after and the other, I invite people from the ecosystem, what I call the industry mentors. We're going to have breakout rooms and they're going to be talking with you for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we're going to rotate. So they will provide feedback on your idea. They will provide perhaps suggestions on uh, where to go, or perhaps also information about things that went perhaps uh, uh, not that well, or perhaps things that went well in this market and etc. So you will be surrounded, the word that I was looking for is surrounded by, on one side, the senior mentor and these body mentors, that you will see your progress. You will be able to talk with them as you want. And these ad hoc mentors, okay? Even though the ad hoc mentor, what I call the industry mentors, will come for session and will go, they will not know about you after, unless you request me or them directly to have perhaps more contact with you, okay? But these industry mentors, will come and go. One session you have, you will have number uh, a person A, the other session you're gonna have a best, uh, person C and D. But that's always people that are carefully selected in the ecosystem, not only in, uh, in, in we have also people from outside of Portugal, but they are select, se carefully selected to provide you with the necessary feedback for you to move forward, okay? So that's gonna be, the idea of the organization of the, um, the program. And that's what uh, we believe make it very unique because you're going to be really supported, okay? Uh, and it's going to help you to accelerate all that stuff. So before I move um, to the next slide, and the next slide will be about you guys, about the teams. I will ask you to present yourself and, and et cetera. Any questions about that, about the mentors? No? Okay, let's, let's get it to the next one. So I don't know you, nobody knows you, or perhaps the people from your team. So it's gonna be the first um, possibility or the first interaction you're gonna have with the rest of the group until that, that will share a lot in common until the end of May. So what I would like to ask you is, um, who are you? It's not about your idea. It's about the person. We want to know the person behind the idea. You, you will have a placeholder to pitch your project after. We'd like to hear about you, okay? I'll be taking some notes as well, but basically what I'd like to hear is which team you are uh, inserted in, your name, and remember, we're not, from, uh, we're not uh, native English speakers. So spell your name or tell your name very slowly so we can take notes. What is your occupation? Not all people are current students. We have alumni, we have other people, but tell us about that. If you are a student, a current student, 
which university are you and which course, okay? What are your expectations about the program? And tell us something a little bit unexpected about you. So to kind of an icebreaker. And the way I'd like to do that, I'd like to start with um, the team Whisper. So Whisper, can you please come on stage and share with us, you know, uh, some of this information here? Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's me. It's just me. Um, probably a little bit of an outlier since my team only is composed of me. Um, so I'm Leonard, um, spelled L-E-N-N-A-R-T. And I basically just graduated from Catholica, um, just defended my master's thesis. I'm still enrolled. So basically, I'm looking for an excuse to not start working in like a company right now. Um, I have a little bit of brief startup experience. Uh, I worked in two startups before, which was really cool to see. Um, so right now, I'm, since I'm still enrolled, but I basically graduated, I'm not in Lisbon anymore. And I'm also looking basically for excuses to come back. So ideally, I would like to succeed here um, to be able to work with you guys um, in Lisbon. And what I'm looking forward to here is um, I really like the atmosphere of getting together with young enthusiastic, innovative people. So I'm really looking forward to sharing ideas and tips and tricks basically with you, probably on Discord or in these sessions here. And something unexpected about me, um, I don't know. Uh, I have a bonsai, which is kind of like a kid to me. Um, so it's just my little tree, um, which is pretty cool. And yeah, not much more to say at this point. Um, I'm just happy and grateful for the opportunity to be here. And yeah, looking forward to getting to know all of you. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, can you tell us what were your, your course that you just finished? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. It was um, management with strategy and entrepreneurship. So yeah, basically lots of overlaps here. And probably my most favorite class was digital product management, which heavily inspired me. And if you are still enrolled and you are yet to take the class, take that one class. It's the best. Uh, it gives you all the tools. It gives you so much great knowledge and insights. And yeah, take digital product management. Thanks. I do subscribe to that as well, Lennart. Hello. I know Andre for a lot of time and uh, he has really an uh, entrepreneur's mindset. He started with the... Uh, uh, a, a company um, uh, that was in, uh, about, you know, lodging for students in the past. The name escaped me, but you may remember. He's now working on a startup on a virtual kitchen. And I do also really appreciate the, what he brings to the students and to the content of the class. So I think it's a good, uh, it's also, I, I would share with you some of your remarks here. So... Thanks, Whisper. So, Leonard, you confirm your name is Whisper? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's in the works. It's basically an MVP okay. as well, but yeah, it's Whisper. Like all this course here, or this program, things can change very rapidly, but so far it's Whisper. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. So now we're going to move to um, the phase behind We Paddle. Can you get you on stage and share with us about information about you, please? Hi, hi everyone. My name is Bernardo. Um, I'm from Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I just finished this week my my bachelor uh, in international business administration. So I'm now looking for um, for uh, some internship or or a job. I would like to start uh, working or at least have some professional experience before I I, I have my master's degree. Um, the expectations about the course, uh, I really like to, as Leonard said, uh, I really like to get in touch with, with people with the same, like kind of the same. In we don't hear you well. Bernardo, I think your connection, I don't know if it's me or me, I don't hear you. Me neither. Maybe okay. you can pull out the video. Yeah. Just to have just the voice. Leonardo? I think I think you went on, on playing paddle. 
I think it was expected. To <laughs> <laughs> okay, so My Bernardo, are you back? No, so we're gonna move, and and after we're gonna we're gonna get back to Bernardo. Um, the next uh, team I'd like to call on board here is uh, is I put the name together. Perhaps it's not correct because I didn't have the name. It's called Job Search. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm not sure you can see me. I want to say sorry because. I couldn't solve the problem with my camera, so I'm not sure. Tell me if you can see me. Otherwise, uh, I will just you can just hear my voice. We don't see you, but it's no problem. We want to hear your voice, so you can. You oh, can go okay, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my name is Saverio. Uh, I'm 22 and I come from Italy. I'm currently living in Lisbon, studying my master in Catholica University, master in uh, strategic marketing. Um, actually, I was inscribed um, in the Master in Finance, but uh, I switched course because uh, I think that uh, any, uh, everybody should follow his passions. And I discovered that finance was not my real passion, but it's um, about marketing. So I'm really happy about this change. And yeah, I graduated in my home city, um, but I decided that I wanted to uh, try an experience um, outside studying abroad and uh, I found in Catolica the perfect university that suits my desires of uh, uh, instructions and then education. And um, uh, what I expect from this program uh, for sure is um, that I can share my ideas and uh, finally I can um, confront with somebody that has experience and I can be followed. But uh, for me, it's already a great result to be able uh, yeah, to share this idea because, you know, sometimes um, I feel quite alone, like developing my ideas um, in my free time or sometimes also working by night, you know. Uh, so it's always something that I keep for myself, but uh, I think it's a very good occasion uh, to let, his, uh, let it just come out. And something expected, uh, unexpected about me, uh, probably that I define myself a nomad, like uh, I really like to uh, spend time of my life in different places as much as I can, of course, depending on uh, my possibility of money and time. So yeah, mm, this is me. And uh, I'm alone in this idea. And um, I would like um, to catch this occasion to ask you something. Um, if it's possible for me to um, present another idea um, instead of the one for which I was selected, because um, I'm mostly working on this other idea. And um, I really would like that is this other idea on which I'm working on that uh, comes mm, to light, you know, that uh, people can know this idea uh, instead of uh, the uh, job search platform. Um, if you agree, if it's not a problem, otherwise uh, I will mm, do it normally. <laughs> so what we will do, thanks for the intro. What we'll do, Saverio, we will give you the opportunity to pitch in five minutes instead of having to pitch one, you can pitch two. And after uh, we'll see with, um, with um, especially with the, the mentors, if this is something we can help you with or not, because the idea was to select the idea and then match the mentors. So ah, there is okay, some okay, no back, back grand work that was done before, but we'll see, okay? Sure, sure, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. Shall uh, we go back to Pavel? Yeah, yeah sorry, <laughs> my, my connection is a bit unstable, but I think now it's it solved that problem. Um, so as I was was saying, uh, my, I'm also uh, alone in my in my project. My team is only is only me. Um, uh, I'm Bernard. I think you you heard that part. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I finished my bachelor this week in international business administration. Uh, I'm looking for an internship now or, or a job because I would like to get some professional experience before before going to my into my masters um my expectations about this course is to connect with with different people with uh, with kind of the same mindset as me and uh, innovative ideas and always looking forward to create solutions um 
and also to get to get some knowledge from the the senior mentors um, and their their expertise. Um, uh, I love sports. I love uh, like all kinds of sports. Uh, I think I I've practiced ten or more sports during all my life. Currently, I I play golf for five years now. Um, uh, I also am very interested in all, all that has to do with blockchain, smart contracts, cryptocurrencies, uh, DeFi, decentralized finances, um, Web 3.0 and the metaverse, all those revolutionary things that I believe that uh, will soon change the way we, we live today. Um, something unexpected about me. Um, well, this... This is not quite unexpected, but I, I live um, the last five months in Paris. I was doing my, my Erasmus, Erasmus semester there, and it was the, the most rewarding experience I, I think I ever had because it made me grow a lot and learn a lot of things. And I am very, very grateful for that. And I'm also very grateful and honored to be part of this program and looking forward to, to meet you all. Excellent, Bernardo. Thanks. I can say as a French guy that perhaps your experience in Paris was good, except the Parisian. But I'm sure that you met a lot of other people. Uh, as an example, uh, in this case, and especially Saverio for that, the buddy mentor, that the, the senior mentor that would like to work with Bernardo is a person that uh, is playing extensively paddle. Uh, his family is playing on the competition level. And he has a lot of contact in the paddle world. So we try to match all of that, you know? So that's, that's what we'll see uh, how it goes forward. But OK, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome thank on you. board. OK. Uh, let's move on to uh, Crowdify. Please, guys. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I'll just start. Uh, we are a team of three uh, together with uh, Christian and Philip. My name is uh, Timo. I'm 22 years old, uh, currently studying or in the final stages of my master's degree at uh, Munich Uni uh, University of Applied Sciences in the uh, area of finance and accounting. Uh, in the meantime, well, the last past five uh, months I spent uh, at uh, Telefonica's corporate VC. Uh, so basically sitting on the other side of the table. So it's great to have this program to to basically work on your, your own idea, um, sit on the, on the yeah, opposite side and, and really um, see what we what we can achieve here. And right now I'm in the uh, in-house consulting and strategy department of Telefonica for the for the last months um, until the end of my my thesis, which I'm writing about basically the portfolio anal analysis of the Wira um, venture capital portfolio. Um, my expectation about this program is basically, like I just said, um, sitting on the the other side of the table, working on your your own ideas, getting really challenged on on what we on the structure we have on on uh, the running through the whole process basically uh, so i'm really looking forward to this and also connecting to the to the mentors and the other participants uh, and then well something unexpected about me maybe uh, more more of the team so um regarding christian for example it's it's great to uh, I, I know him since uh, seventh grade so basically for for 10 years so it's uh, really a pleasure uh, to to work with him together um, in the scope of this this project uh, with that i think i'm handing over to philip now, can i ask you a question timo sorry yeah philip. for sure uh, where uh, physically where are you located and you're working for telefonica where in spain or in other locations ah uh, no uh, basically for the for the german subsidiary uh, okay. and right now i'm in the the wire office in munich uh, in at marienplatz okay Excellent. Thanks. Welcome, Timo. Philip, sorry. No worries. Uh, then I continue. My name is Philip. Um, I'm currently in Lisbon, actually. I'm studying. Uh, I'm doing a double degree. <clears throat> sorry. Um, I'm in my second year now, I'm doing the International Master of Science and Finance at Catholica. And then my first year was at the VAU in Germany, where I did my uh, Master in Management program. I enjoy Lisbon very much and uh, have high expectations also for this program where I'm looking forward to yeah, finding a way on how to really build a company and develop, develop our idea and how to get this idea to the market as well. Um, exactly. So, so I'm very happy to, to get all the insights from industry and VC, et cetera. 
By the way, I'm also writing my thesis about venture capital right now. And something unexpected about me, well, right now I have COVID, at least for me, it was unexpected. So maybe, maybe for you too. <laughs> and with that, I uh, hand over to Christian. Okay, good luck, Philip. Hope you get well faster. Uh, thank you very you much. Um, yeah, I'm the third member of Crowdify. My name is uh, Christian Mantai. My second name is a bit uh, difficult to pronounce, but I hope you can read it uh, on, on Zoom. Um, I'm currently a student at Catholica in the Masters in International Finance together with, with Philip. And uh, before that, I studied uh, central banking uh, at the German Central Bank, and it was a cooperative study program. It was very interesting. I saw various departments and uh, one of the most interesting departments was the one where I worked on uh, international banking supervision. And uh, I focused on uh, the regulatory aspects of blockchain, which is uh, in, yeah, regulation and banking regulation, a very, very new topic that wasn't touched before. And uh, there are very, very strong developments that can be seen in the last few years. Um, yeah. Now I'm yeah, in Lisbon as well. I'm going to, to BI next year. Um, yeah, my expectation about the program is that I hope to have fun to work with Timo and Philip on the project and to get to know the yeah, senior buddies and the other startups to get a bit more into the ecosystem in Lisbon because that's something that I haven't touched in the master's program so far that started in, in September. So it's not that long, but yeah, so far I was just more or less uh, overwhelmed with the master's program, but now I want to try to see uh, the startup ecosystem. And um, yeah, as an icebreaker, I could say that uh, I am I like to go to the mountains as a Bavarian, which is probably not very unexpected, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. The, the guys, so how, one more piece, person from Crowdify or you're only three? You're three, no? Uh, we are three, exactly, yeah. Okay. One thing that is unexpected for me is the, the fact that you're all finance students. We usually have in this program more entrepreneurship. And uh, it's super interesting to see that um, you guys are on board and you have an idea that you want to push and you want to connect with the ecosystem. It's usually not the case because you guys are focusing on other things, okay? You are either involved on the investment club or other things, but you're not really having... Uh, usually the, the mindset of uh, hanging around with the entrepreneurship community. So guys, feel yourself at home, welcome, and uh, let's work together, okay? Welcome here. Thank you. Let's Thank go you to the next week. team. So Katen, please come on stage and tell us about you. Hi, uh, hello everyone. I'm uh, Tonchi, I, from, I come from Croatia. Uh, I'm a student. I'm doing uh, entrepreneurship and strategy. Uh, this is my final semester, dissertation semester. Uh, I come from Croatia, uh, from the coast of Croatia, which is uh, very popular touristically. And that gives me opportunity to work like, uh, every summer. And I've been working since I'm nine or 10 years old. Uh, the expectation from uh, this program is to have fun, to learn, uh, to gain experience from people from uh, the industry. And something unexpected, I would say the name Katan uh, is, the, is the social game that uh, me and my team members are playing pretty much all the time. And that's the game that connected us. And uh, that would be all. Okay. Thank you. Um, you are... Uh, so, yeah, we're going to discuss about your idea. Do you have somebody else in your team? I think so, yeah? Yeah, there is uh, my friend Brahim, who is also here in the, in the, in the meeting. Okay. Uh, doing uh, marketing. <laughs> no, I can speak for myself. Yes. <laughs> no, I can speak. You can speak. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I'm Ibrahim. I came from Egypt. Uh, the occupations I'm, I've done, like I've worked with like, so many different jobs in the past. But currently, I'm doing this. Um, uh, Masters in management with a specialization in strategic marketing. And my expectation from this course is like to be connected with different people and how to see uh, people like how 
to how creative they are and uh, uh, how they uh, start from the scratch, as they say, and they get to what you really want in different ways. Um, something unexpected about me, maybe I'm the oldest one at Catholica, as I'm like now turning 28, uh, because of like I had this huge gap between my uh, bachelor and my master's actually because I was working. Uh, that's it. <laughs> A question, Ibrahim. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. You were working previously on which industry? I have worked in telemarketing in some British company, and I worked in, but mainly I was like working in export and import uh, company. So I was like export manager for like four years. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. Do we have uh, uh, somebody else on? On the Catan team, that like to, uh, it's only two here. Two? Okay. So last but not least, let's go for Gaia. Please, guys. Hello. Um, I am Philip. Um, I'm, we are, uh, so I'm from, I'm from Gaia. I'm uh, also a student in Lisbon doing my master's, but on Nova. Uh, not on business school, but on on information management school, mm -hmm. uh, doing a master in statistics uh, and information management in marketing. Um, also just now finishing my thesis. And at the same time, I am part-time working for B Corp. Uh, so this is a uh, sustainability has always been an important part for me, which is also connected to our, to our project. Uh, for the expectations about this program, I would say mostly we I expect to meet people from different industries to that would also give us some insights about how these kind of communities that we want to build work and to get some kind of connections and maybe get also some kind of hard criticisms for the things that we think should work and maybe uh, we are just thinking it wrong. Uh, for something unexpected about me maybe since i'm the first one from the team presenting i would say actually something interesting about the team we are here like five, let's say five people and we are from four different countries so uh, we are trying to keep the diversity inside our team uh, which is also connected to our project and now i would uh, forward to nicholas to present uh, next Thanks for the intro. Where are you from? Sorry, Nicholas. Tulip, where are you from originally? I am from Slovenia. Okay. Welcome here. So thanks. Philip? Hi, guys. Um, it's probably me, Nicholas. Nicholas. Um, so I, I'm also from Gaia. Uh, nice to meet you, everyone. Um, I'm currently doing a master thesis or finishing my master thesis. Um, I studied strategy and entrepreneurship at uh, Catholica. But I'm now a founder associate at a startup in Berlin at the moment. And regarding the expectations, yeah, I think like first to meet um, great people, to network a bit, but also to challenge our ideas and how we think about it and yeah, get the feedback from everyone. And then tell us something about unexpected. Um, what I find unexpected, I can just tell I'm in London at the moment and it's crazy that no one has to wear a mask. It's Freedom Day and <laughs> it's very strange coming from more lockdown and mask and of country at the moment. Um, yeah, so I will pass on to Oli, Olivia. Thanks. Where are you from originally? I'm from uh, Germany. Germany. One thing I wanted to add before you pass on to the next person, yeah. there's one team that... Uh, uh, actually was also involved, involved in, in BET, BET24, that are students and they're now um, um, in Berlin and the name of the startup is called Nine Bark. And mm -hmm. you know them? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these guys, I still have them, they're drawing here in my office. <laughs> So I hope that you guys go in the same direction. I'm super proud of this, these guys. And it started here, you know, at the beginning. So uh, good luck to all of you. So it was just an, uh, uh, an apart. So next person, please. 
Hey, I'm Olivia. Um, I'm the third member of the team. I'm from Germany, but my both my parents are Polish, so I'm German-Polish. Um, I am studying at Nova SBE. I'm studying impact entrepreneurship, inter, well, impact entrepreneurship and innovation. That's a new program that they started this year or launched this year. Um, and my expectations about this program are... Mm, so my, my program at Nova is already built up like an accelerator. So I'm really curious to have an, a bit different perspective from Katolika because I think it's like both great universities, great insights and great mentors. Um, and I think it's really cool to be, yeah, to have the interaction between both those universities. Mm, and uh, about me... I don't know, once I was swimming in the ocean and I opened my eyes and I bumped into a shark. I think that was really cool and unexpected. Um, yeah. I think I'll pass on to Maciel. Okay, but where, where were you diving? What did happen? I was in Australia. Okay, cool. Thanks, Olivia. Welcome here. Thank you. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Maciel. I am 26 years old. I'm from Peru. I'm Mexican-Peruvian, actually. Um, well, I'm part of the team. I am currently studying my master in uh, the same master as Olivia, mm -hmm. Impact Entrepreneurship and Innovation in Carcavelos. Um, I worked for four years in Mondeliz, a big transnational company, but I quit to, to do this master. Um, also because I wanted to do my own thing. Um, well, I expect from this program to gain insights also from like different perspectives, also like Oli said. Uh, and also I expect that we can make Gaia a reality with the help of you. Um, and something unexpected, maybe I have more than... 10 nicknames <laughs> because my my name is like not very common and then I love mountaineering I I lived in the mountains for three three months before coming to 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 Portugal and I yeah I fell in love with climbing and mountaineering and that's it okay thanks so welcome to the Carcavels folks to here you, we are we are happy that you're here with us, and especially I think this is interesting. This is independently of the school and etc. I think great ideas are coming from different people, different horizons, etc. And uh, it's usually how it works. So welcome all of you here. So we did the presentation of the team. Is someone uh, forgotten here or would like to add something? No. Okay. So let's move to Pedro. You were holding your horses up until here. And perhaps I'll let you take the, the ownership of this slide. Okay, okay. So basically, uh, we did divide the startups for between two mentors. And so solution we're happy. So the solution we're happy clients share their product means is going to have Dimani and Karm, uh, two mentors. So Dimani is a master student and Carmi is a bachelor student. So my goal here was to divide between each startup a, bachelor, a master student with a bachelor student. Uh, I believe the money is not here, but please Carmi, if you want to share a few words with the rest of the group, that would be awesome. Um, so hi, uh, I'm, first of all, I'm looking forward to work with you guys. I'm very excited to start this project. Um, I am my second year of my bachelor's as well, um, as Quintana, as Pedro Quintana, and um, well, yeah, I've been, I, I entered BETS this year, and uh, well, that's it. I'm 19 years old, and, and again, I'm very excited to start this project with you. Awesome. Uh, next, matching solution for Palo players. I decided to put Mike and Katrina together in this one. Uh, Katrina is not here, but Mike is here to present the team. So Mike, please, if your mic is available now, please speak a few words. Yeah, hi, is it working now? 
Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Mike. I'm also studying at Catholica at the International Management and uh, Entrepreneurship Master. Um, and I'm from the Netherlands, but yeah, I'm now in Lisbon, of course. Um, and what I wanted to say about like this company, what I'm really interested uh, about it is that I actually also wanted to play pedal here, but I haven't managed yet because I couldn't find any players. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, th this must be a gap in the market for sure. <laughs> okay, if you want to play, we can always play someday. Always available. That, that um, would be fun, yeah. <laughs> next, uh, search your platform for young professionals. So uh, me and Matija are the ones that are going to work with the startup. Uh, Matija is a master's student. And myself, I already present myself. And I believe I, I really enjoy this idea. I believe it's uh, one that many people that are studying in university for master's bachelor's have maybe a, a hard time finding jobs. So maybe another platform is a good opportunity for everyone. So yeah, so I felt that this is a good startup and I believe that we can help uh, it to achieve their goals. Um, next, blockchain-based solution to collect funds from investors. So again, Mike is here, but now with Yannick. And Yannick, please say some words. Yes, thank you very much, Peter. Um, yes, yeah, so hello everybody. Um, I'm Yannick. I'm also doing my master's in management here at Catholica with specialization in strategy, entrepreneurship, and impact. And um, yeah, uh, I got assigned to the blockchain team. Um, and uh, I think it's a very good fit because I was uh, in my previous job working as yeah product manager for an IT company, and I also or oh, I already got in touch with several um, yeah modern technologies. And um, that's also um, like how I became uh, passionate about cutting edge, cutting edge technologies. So I think um, it's a very good fit. And I'm also uh, really um, yeah, eager and um, yeah, motivated to learn more about technology itself and also to get to know uh, you guys as a team. Um, yeah, expectations about the program. Besides that, um, I want to like learn as much as possible from the startup ecosystem get insights how you actually uh, raise a startup because that's also something i'm aiming for after my studies um and yeah tell us something unaccepted about you um maybe uh, in the previous year i was doing a cycling trip from munich and germany to split in croatia in order to raise uh, awareness for um yeah plastic free oceans or, or the Im impact of plastic in the oceans and uh, we're able to collect more than 20,000 of donations. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Can I, can I ask you a question, Yanni? Congrats on the, on the initiative. How many Ks did you do every day? Uh, we did around 80 to 100 kilometers a day, but uh, taking into account that we had 30 kilograms of luggage on our bikes, so it was <laughs> quite hard to do it. OK, excellent. Thank you for sharing that and congrats again. Pedro? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, next, uh, community-based skills learning platform. So here we have Dimana and Gonçal. Um, so Dimana, as I said, it's not here, but Gonçal, please share a few words, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Gonçal. I'm 19 years old. I'm currently studying at my second year of my bachelor in business and administration. And I'm very excited to be part of this project with you guys and see your startups getting successful um and okay finally we have a forum where lisbon based students can meet and reflect on impact and sustainability yeah in this team we have matija and carm um you already know carm uh matija fortunately we wasn't able to come he tried to do a video but i believe there was a problem with the recording so he wasn't able to share the video with us but i believe next time between next week or if very in short time you're going to meet him and the rest of the team together and maybe the senior mentor as well so yeah so don't worry about that can you tell us do you know pedro where uh, what matija is doing and uh, where he's from just um, for information um, <laughs> actually i don't really know i don't know it's a masters i believe it's masters i believe he's doing the same masters as mike but or yannick i don't really know but yeah uh, I don't really know the, the exact terminology of the of the master. Sorry, but he's a so master. Mike, Mike, I believe it's the same as yours. So please share your masters again. 
Yeah, I think he's also doing the Master in International Management, Innovation and Innova uh, Entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Like we have quite big classes, so I don't always see him around. Yeah. No issue, no issue. Um, Just wanted to know if he was a master or an undergraduate. Nah, he's a master. So, yeah. um, so it's uh, four of us are from bachelors on so the second year in bachelors in business administration, and four of us are uh, basically masters doing um, different kinds of masters in Catholic. Okay, excellent. So thank you, Beth. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, all the guys. I saw uh, Dimana at the beginning, but she had to drop, no? And unfortunately, yes, she had the, already um, a, a, a meeting. So she had she a puddle game scheduled, perhaps, or, or <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay. So thank you, guys. Welcome here. One last thing that I wanted to add is on the bottom left corner of your screen. What is happening also during this um, this program is that besides all these you know dimensions of the buddy mentor, the senior mentor, the industry mentor, the, in April you, we're gonna invite some people that are not from the ecosystem, but people that would be potential clients. So uh, imagine that. Uh, I'll take it easy on, on, on the example. Imagine that this is a paddle ap application. What we're going to bring here, we're going to bring one or two persons that are players that are not entrepreneurs, but could be potential users. So they're going to give you feedback on your idea. And the feedback is very different from mentors. Mentors have the overall understanding of the industry. They know how to orient things. Potential users are usually very harsh and you know, very di difficult to please if you don't uh, really nail their issue or their pain. So you will have to pitch in front of these guys and they will tell you, mm, I like this idea, but you know, I can go around with uh, WhatsApp group or I can do around with blah, blah, I don't want to pay. So it's going to be very valuable feedback. And in order to help us out to get these people aligned for the client validation, is we're going to have Beth uh, uh, helping out also to, to schedule that and find the people. So I don't think it's going to be Pedro's team, but we'll see after. So usually this is what's happening. Okay. So again, one more opportunity to validate uh, your idea. Okay, Pedro, can I move forward on the next slide? For sure, for sure. Excellent. So thank you, Beth, again, for your participation. Uh, I'm here. So... Any questions so far? No? Okay. So what's the reality? And now uh, I have, let me see, I have one, I have one, two, I have three slide and a half before the break. Okay. And we're going to break at about, in about 15 to 20 minutes. So what's the reality? What did we uh, thought about this program? The reality is the following is, um, and let me put that here, is that you are, uh, you know, the raw material, if I can use this expression, uh, for, you know, this program. You are currently university students or you left university, uh, you know, like a few months ago. And if you are looking into entrepreneurship, if you want to launch your venture, you will be looking at non-incubators or accelerators. Okay, so you have uh, some of them in Lisbon, you have in Porto, you have in Berlin, you have in France, in Paris, etc. Okay, what the research is showing us, and not only our belief, but the research, is that there is usually a gap between the level of people getting out of the university and to get um, an acceptance or to be accepted into a business incubator. Okay. And this is really where we want to play in. In the center, we want to play in this, um, in this you know, missing gap. And what do we want to do here? Because usually what's happening is that you are, and especially business student, you are quite good with the idea of the market, you know, about eventually the financial information, etc. But what is missing usually is the, is uh, 
a complete or as much as possible complete client validation. More than 42% of the startup die, not because of a bad product, but they die because they have no clients. So imagine all the energy that you waste in putting on the market a product that doesn't have any clients. So number one, what we're going to be doing with you is, you know, to uh, provide you with marketing, uh, with market uh, tests. You're going to be doing customer validation, which is number one, a lot of customer validation. And this customer validation will have different faces. It will have the face of the senior body, the body mentors, the uh, industry mentors, the client validation, and you're going to receive a lot of feedback. By receiving a lot of feedback, it's going to help you, you know, to get more, um, uh, um, you know, um, uh, assurance to present your idea, assurance to uh, understand how things work, etc. So we want to provide with you with more ability to be a, a, a person that can pitch better their idea because you're going to have the ability or the opportunity to pitch on a number of times in front of different type of people. We're going to provide you with coaching. So not only coaching from the mentors, we also have lined up people from the US, uh, interesting people. And one of them is uh, this person here. Uh, I don't know if you know this, this book. This person here, Jonathan Littman, will be also part of one of the, uh, the, and this is new, last year we didn't have that. But this person will be also part of one of our workshop uh, to provide you with feedback, uh, perhaps on uh, design thinking and et cetera. We're also gonna have people helping you out for pitching. So we want to provide you some tools, okay? And, uh, um, in the end, within this reality of the program, it's testing, testing, being in front of the people presenting. And little by little, you will see that you're going to get uh, more data, more customer information that's going to help you to either, and I have to be, uh, I have to tell you the truth. Sometimes some project will die, will stop, or most of the project will pivot and perhaps one or two of them will go in the same direction. All that stuff will depend on the feedback that you receive and you as the funders, how you want the things to go. Okay, so that's the purpose we're here today. And that's the purpose why um, the center launched this, uh, this forward program. All right, so next slide, the dates. Um, we had to do some changes. And uh, I'm sharing with you the, the changes because of some reason of the availability of the people and etc. So this is the final calendar. Um, this is the first session today. The next session will happen on the 19th and not the 12th. Okay. What are we going to do in the next session? We um, gonna have people invited. You know, industry mentors. You're gonna pitch and get feedback from them. We're going to be looking at uh, hypothesis identification and validation plan. We want you to pro we want to provide you with the tools to be able to do a very good customer validation. So we're going to share some of the methodology and way to do that. And we're going to be touching about MVP, minimum viable product. And you know this is really the two things that we would like you to get out of this program is. Uh, a good customer validation and the ability to come up with the MVP. And here in this, um, in this um, session, we're going to have someone from the ecosystem, from Demium, that has been doing an outstanding job about explaining what is, it, is an MVP and how you build the MVP, etc. So again, we're going to get support from the ecosystem to present content. Then in April, we're going to turn into the third session. And here, Basically, you're going to get more exposure to uh, industry mentors, but this is where you're going to get exposure to the client validation and potential clients. So again, it's going to allow you to do more validation, but also we would like at this point, you will have to share with us how uh, you've been validating your hypothesis, what were the results, etc and getting feedback not only from the mentors, but getting feedback also from the other 
um, participants. On session four, which is in May, at this point, you should have what on session four? You should have client validation robust and MVP that you can share. And then we're gonna, we're gonna bundle that into a pitch rehearsal. So we're gonna have people helping you out uh, with templates and suggest how you could improve for pitching, how many people should be pitching, what kind of things you should say for the pitch, the duration and et cetera. So really here it's gonna be about the soft skills of captivating an audience and presenting your idea. And then uh, again, we had to change that because of ability of people. Uh, we're gonna be pitching on May, you will be pitching in front of a jury on May 21st. So the jury will be made of um, people from the incubators, but this year also we're gonna get the help uh, from uh, investors in very early stage projects. And the jury would be about five to six people they're going to have um, you know, a grid with uh, indicators, and then they're going to have to decide who is the winner and uh, which is the team that has 1,000 euro to spend after on, on different things. Uh, they're going to recommend people to go to some incubator or the others, et cetera. Okay? The program doesn't stop here. Is we always available here at CTA uh, to help you out, and you can still continue. And I still have contact with teams from the last year that are you know progressing in, uh, in, in, in gaining their way. So that's the that's the plan for for the sessions. I'm gonna update the dates. And one thing I wanted you to know is look at the notes. Things will not always go according to plans and it can be a bit messy. We are in entrepreneurship, you know, uh, we're trying our best with the resources we have to give you the most we can. Sometimes you may have a glitch or the other. Please be patient, but not only patient, provide us with feedback. We live with your feedback and we want you to tell us how we could improve. So all that stuff is really one of the philosophy why Celine and myself put that together is to get feedback and get better. So either the senior buddies, the buddy mentors, you from the teams, you know, all the people participating, tell us how we could improve, okay? Sometimes it's gonna be good stuff. Sometimes you're gonna be upset. But hey, that's life, and this is entrepreneurship life as well. Any questions on that? Moving on. How are we going to work? Two types of, uh, we're going to encapsulate what we call the core team, uh, senior mentors, buddy mentors, and teams. Only, only these three parts will have access to the Discord platform. Then we're gonna have the extended team, which is gonna be the core team, plus the industry mentors, plus client validation, et cetera, that will have access to Zoom and if required to WhatsApp. So really the Discord team is your place to hold this information, to discuss and hold your what you want to do there, okay? Obviously, we're not, obliging you to use Discord. We think it's more convenient, okay? But you can still use any other platforms, okay? Me, I will be using Discord as my main point of contact for the team, the teams and all the, the core team. I will put their announcement, I will put their documents, videos, etc. okay? So that's how we, we gonna, we're gonna work. And now as a transition, moving to the next slide, which is about Discord, this is what uh, is being done. We currently have uh, a server that has been uh, configured with various rules and et cetera. And uh, this, uh, this platform has been set up by Tech at Catholica. So what do we have? We have a general channel where everyone can say everything. And then we're gonna have closed groups. We're gonna have closed groups for the senior buddies. We're gonna have closed group for the buddy mentors. We're gonna have groups only for one team, for the other, et cetera. And we're gonna have privilege to associate, I mean, we're gonna have privilege that's gonna allow us to associate to one team, his body mentor, his body mentors, 
and the senior mentor. Okay, so you're going to be able to share information, discuss in a preserved and closed environment if you want, or if you can go, want, you can go to the general channel and discuss with the others. Okay, each of these specific groups or, or yeah, we have his own voice channel, chats, and etc. Okay, so that stuff is already done. This is built. And uh, I'm going to be no, your host there. I'm going to be the one with the support of some perhaps people here also to uh, be doing some kind of community management. So I'm going to be posting information. I'm going to be challenging you about some things. I'm going to put some news, etc. So this is what I'm going to be doing. Okay. This platform exists and what's happening and the next step now to have access to that is you should have, uh, you should be able, you, you perhaps have already a Discord user. If this is the case, you send it to me and then you're going to receive a link to enter the server based on your roles. Or if you don't have yet uh, a Discord user, I sent yesterday a tutorial on how to get uh, uh, a Discord user, and I can help the ones that need help for that to happen. Okay, so next step, Discord exists, get a Discord user, share it with me. If you don't have it, get it done, okay? And um, we're almost on time, good, 3.30. And the next point is about questions. Otherwise, we go for 15 minutes break before we get back for the second part of the session, which is about presenting your idea and getting um, feedback about these ideas already. Questions, guys? Excellent. Long, so, sorry, sorry, how long do you want the initial pitch to go? Like in terms of- Five minutes max. Okay. Okay, some people will make it very easy. Some people will make it will going to be difficult. I'll leave five minutes. When you're going to pitch at the end in May, it's going to be three minutes. All right. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, it's 3.30 and I'm not bad on time this time. So let's meet back. Oops. Uh, at uh, here, let's meet back at uh, 3.45. Here. Okay. Uh, share my screen. Do you see that? Yeah. Go and have a coffee. Do whatever you want for 15 minutes. Thank you for your participation so far. And I'll be back in 15 minutes. Thank you guys. See you there.
Oye, oye, oye. Welcome back. It's 45. I will reopen the, the channel. So Timo, I see you here. Um, you mentioned you are in Berlin or in Munich? In Munich. Uh, at some point we worked with a company called InnoSabi. Do you know them or no? Uh, no, unfortunately not. I don't know InnoSpot, but this is more of a startup scouting company. Okay, because InnoSabi was doing um, um, uh, innovation with uh, you know, um, the crowd wisdom for innovation for products. Mm -hmm. Like the gummy bears, they were asking, they were involving involving the clients to decide which color they should have, etc. So it was interesting. We worked with them once okay. on that. So I see faces moving here. Let's wait a little bit. So we have half of the people. We'll, we'll continue anyway. So we'll see if people are joining. Let's wait a little bit, like two minutes more. It's 47. We'll wait to start at 49. Who has, uh, who has not here um, a, Disca, a Discord um, user? Everyone has one. Philip? I don't, I don't have one, but uh, I'm going to make one. It's not going to be a problem. Okay. So a question for you in terms of, uh, I'm doing market research here. You don't have one because uh, you never use Discord. Or you think this is not the appropriate tool to use for this kind of uh, program? Since I haven't used it, I wouldn't know if it was the right tool, but uh, I think um, there are a lot of tools that do the same thing. So for me, it hasn't been necessary yet to get a Discord account. But I'm happy to try it out and let you know afterwards if I find it uh, better or worse than everything else. Yeah, one thing interesting, you from the, the group of the, of the blockchain, correct? Yes. We, we, had a, we had four sessions of blockchain and crypto on July last year. And what we found out that a lot of this community is hanging out hanging out in either telegram or in uh, in discord so a lot of these people are there um just i didn't know about that before so i just wanted to share that with you <laughs> thanks for sharing for sure i think it's a it, it really is a culture thing yeah. it's uh, what you believe in and yeah. all this gamification uh points towards discord i would say yeah exactly like uh, like uh, i think seven eight years ago we were still using Facebook groups. And now I would be killed if you were, I was saying, you know, let's use Facebook groups. So things are evolved and the, 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 the speed, the things are evolving in terms of platform is amazing. You know, we used to use a little bit Slack, et cetera. Now a lot of people uh, ask us actually to, to use Discord because this is what they use for either gaming or for sharing information, whatever, okay? So guys, uh, here we are. Let's go to the next part. Thanks for being back here. Thanks for cruising with us at the cruising altitude of 12,000 feet. We're much reaching destination. So uh, it's going to be about you now. It's going to be about especially your idea and why you are in this program. So what I'm going to ask you is um, team by team, and here, I don't care about the order. You guys can choose, you know, Gaia can choose to talk first or whatever, because I don't want to force always the same team to be first and be last. What I will do, I will um, not give you any guidance. If you are more than one person team, you can choose who is pitching or you can have multiple people pitching. The only constraint I'm going to put in this interaction it's going to be the five minutes. You cannot go over five minutes. If it is less, it's fine. You don't have to say more, okay? Then after the first step, 
will be about um, a self-evaluation. So you're going to tell us um, what you think about your performance. Okay. If you miss something you wanted to have said, you wanted to say, you didn't say that, or etc. So it's going to be a self-evaluation. Then I'm going to ask if someone wants to provide feedback or especially ask questions. One thing I wanted within the audience, okay, within the peers, within the teams, within the senior buddies, or as Joachim is here, or perhaps other mentors are here. These questions are very, very important. I noticed that always at the beginning of a program, there are always very relevant questions that sometimes we just put under the carpet and we don't want to answer. So please take note of these answers uh, to see uh, how things uh, you know, evolve and, um, and how you can answer to this question. So the idea is you pitch, I limit that by five minutes. If it's less, it's fine. There is no specific order so the team that want to start first, pitch first. I'm going to ask you for a self-evaluation from the team. And then I'm going to ask people to ask, I mean, who wants to ask question or suggestion, et cetera, to do so, OK? And it's going to be basically what we're going to be doing until we touch the last slide about the next steps, OK? So we have time. Let's use this interaction to uh, the best way possible. So let's interact. OK? Any questions before we start? No? OK, so who wants to start? One million dollar question. You can also share materials if you want. Huh? Uh, then we would like to start if it's fine. And we have. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. If you want to go yeah, first, would, it's also fine. No, no, no. Uh, I would also like uh, to start one of the first because maybe I have to leave just a few minutes uh, before the ending. I'm sorry for this, but I have another meeting. So if I can be one of the first, for me, it's fine. But you can go as first, no problem. No, absolutely. Then you can start if you have a meeting afterwards. Go. So let's Are go. Sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So as Pierre said before, uh, I will try to make a pitch of uh, two minutes and a half about um, uh, my both ideas. Uh, so the idea for which I was selected um, is an idea, uh, a project currently called Easy Job, and it consists in a platform uh, to look for a job, but for guys for uh, under 10, 30 years old. Um, of course, uh, it doesn't mean that just uh, young people can use this. Uh, there are no discrimination. Uh, everybody can use it, but uh, it will be focalized um, on under 30 and they will be um, uh, our target uh, prioritized. Um, so this idea uh, burns um, with the ambitious idea of solving the problem of young uh, employment, unemployment. And uh, um, it wouldn't be just like a, a usual job search um, platform, uh, but it will be uh, it will have uh, some particular innovation that could be a differentiate uh, differentiate uh, factors. Uh, one one of these is um, the possibility for the young guys to um, uh, to complete some tasks. Um, uh, for tasks, uh, I mean um, like uh, small. Um, jobs that can be made uh, during uh, one month um, uh, and uh, the advantage for the um, company is that uh, they can have a substitute uh, just in case somebody uh, as somebody of his self or has an illness or unexpected uh, events that can uh, make prevent people from going to the work um, and um, so the young guy can take their place for just a few uh, few times. Um, and uh, this, of course, uh, doesn't want to uh, promote the precariat job. Uh, for this, it will be uh, pond a, a limitation. Um, so uh, here the aim is for uh, guys to earn different experiences and, of course, making some money, for example, while completing their studying, since it doesn't take too much time. Um, another important innovation uh, that we want to promote is the possibility to give feedback for the work experience, to give and receive, uh, give and receive feedbacks, um, like a tip advisor system. Uh, for example, after a certain time of uh, uh, time working for that company, you can evaluate them and get um, uh, your um, feedback as well back. Um, and um, the aim, the purpose of this uh, feature uh, is to uh, fight as much as possible the abuse made by company uh, to young guys. That is something that um, 
uh, it's a real problem in the actual world. And another section uh, that is um, a point of innovation as well uh, for um, this platform um, is um, a section um, dedicated just to people that have zero experience. So, you know, uh, many guys play, uh, they want to start something, but it's always required um, quite experience in that sector. So this section, it will be just for people that has no experience, but a lot of uh, uh, wish to uh, learn uh, new skills. So. Um, uh, of course, it can be um, a, a, an advantage for both sides, for the company, because they will have like um, cheap, uh, cheaper salesforce. And uh, for the guy, of course, uh, they will earn money and learn. Uh, the most important thing is learning uh, new skills. And another uh, section is um, uh, looking um, like uh, a section just dedicated to internship stages. So um, uh, since it's a problem that I always faced, I was um, there were always few uh, offer online of in internship and stages. Um, the uh, other section of the platform will be dedicated to this. Uh, going, going to the other um, idea, I uh, just want to say that um, uh, I'm promoting also this idea, not because uh, I'm not, uh, I don't like the first one, of course, uh, but uh, because if uh, we want, uh, I'm focusing on following the trend. And now the trend, as um, you were mentioning before, um, is related with uh, blockchain and crypto. So uh, this platform is about this. Um, in particular, um, uh, I want to create uh, a platform that allows to buy uh, fractions of NFT. And NFT are the, um, uh, the digital art and is the biggest trend of the moment, probably. And uh, um, so um, I would like to give everybody the possibility to buy some uh, piece of digital art because then, you know, um, the major part of project have a big cost, so not everybody can afford uh, this high cost. And uh, so my idea is uh, to create a section for this app for a micro investor and uh, another for a micro investor. Um, the micro investor uh, will um, uh, can buy a, a small percentage of um, uh, of the project, and he can have just uh, monetary benefits. Uh, monetary benefits are, for example, uh, dividend uh, from the project uh, creators, or the most important feature is that um, the NFT value can rise during the time, like uh, if you want to say like a share. So uh, the possibility to participate to a project with few money. Well and uh, while yeah, then can you yeah. can you conclude, please? Just the last phrase. Yes, yes. the other side will be um, will be just dedicated to macro investors, and uh, they will be the actual owner, so they will have all the right of the project. But of course, the advantage is that they will um, buy the project at uh, half of the price uh, of an an usual buyer. So um, okay. uh, this is actually uh, my double okay. ideas. Okay, uh, so thank thanks. you. Very much. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Thanks. So, um, so okay. So you had one that is called Easy Job, and you mentioned some of the features, and one that yes. is about allowing to buy fraction of NFTs. Okay. Yeah, perfect. And what we're going to be doing before I, I pass on to your self evaluation is uh, after we'll discuss with the senior buddies and the, and the buddy mentors. Um, Okay, uh, how we can move forward, knowing that we already had chosen an easy job, but we'll see. Okay, we'll we'll try to see what we can do. So, self evaluation. What's what's your what's your feedback on on what you just mentioned? Okay, first of all, like uh, I created this situation. I know I'm responsible of it, but I had the half time to present uh, the idea, so I just had to mention really um, the most important feature. I cannot go. Um, uh, as deep as I would have liked to go, especially for the second idea. So uh, I'm critiquing uh, this point of myself. I would maybe have been um, faster and clearer, especially maybe cut a bit from the first uh, idea and spend 30 seconds, just 30 seconds more on the second. So I'm a bit unsatisfied uh, um, uh, about this aspect. And um, uh, yeah, maybe um if i had to be really critical a more um, this is and self-sure tone to present the ideas uh yeah this is another critic that i want to make to i myself. didn't understand so the last comment severi what's the uh, last like um, 
yeah, more self uh, uh, sure, uh, to be more self sure when I present the idea in my tone. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the evaluation. I'm not going to say anything, I just took notes. I'd like to open it up to anyone in the audience. So I'd love you asking questions or comments or suggestions on what uh, was shared now. Can I ask a question? Please, please, sure. go, go. I'm not, I'm not monitoring anything, so you can... Uh... Um, with regards to the NFT idea, um, which chain are you going to use? Or which... Well, the idea that, yeah, that, that's a part that I could not um, finish. Mm, uh, but yeah, like, uh, I would like um, mm, the, uh, to uh, make the experience for uh, the buyers, for the mm, uh, micro investor, really easy, so they can buy uh, by card and um, uh, simply the money will put in uh, a virtual wallet that will use uh, mainly Ethereum. So the, the answer is uh, mainly uh, Ethereum blockchain. Um, and then um, once the funds are collected in the virtual uh, wallet, uh, the macro investor can make the purchase. They are a kind of uh, uh, all participant in the same project and yeah, and he can purchase um, the project. Okay, so Ethereum is the, is the chain you're going to use, right? Sorry? So the answer was Ethereum, right? That's, that's yeah, 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 the Ethereum is, okay. yeah, 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 Thanks. Ethereum, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. Other questions? Uh, yeah, I have just um, a question slash uh, comment. So uh, the idea is to, to enable uh, investors to buy fractional parts of of nfts but to my doubts and as i'm really also interested in in this matter is that an nft is something that's it's unique it's non-fungible you can't uh interchange it with uh, with uh another one so like my my doubts is if you buy a part of of an nft or a fraction of an nft it means that you don't have the whole nft so there will be other persons with exactly the same uh, piece or the same token as you. So wouldn't that go against the um, like the concept of an NFT, which is to own uh, a unique, completely unique, interchangeable uh, virtual token? Okay, perfect. This is a really interesting question, and I'm really pleased to answer to it because uh, I can clarify <laughs> the uh, the whole uh, idea of the project. Uh, this is interesting, and I say you that there are other platforms that allow you to buy just fraction um, of NFT. But the problem that um, this fraction uh, faced is, is, yeah, what you said, the, the unique, uniqueness of the, the pies. Um, so uh, in order to solve this problem, like um, uh, this, uh, my platform, uh, like allows um, two parts, as I said, the micro investors and the micro investor. So the real, um, the actual owner of the, the NFT uh, of the digital art piece uh, will be the macro investor. So uh, a person that put 51% uh, of the total fund, at least 51%. Um, so the other are just participants um, and investor that put, for example, 20 euro or 50 euro. Um, so a small amount and they have uh, just monetary benefits. So monetary benefits like many dividends um, or just Mm, uh, the value of the NFT can rise, so they can benefit from uh, this increase of value, you know. But the real act, uh, so uh, just to um, answer completely to your question, um, the real actuator, sorry, the, uh, the real uh, owner uh, will be just uh, one person that put the 51% um, of the fund and he will have all the rights. Thank you. Other questions or suggestions? On, on the first idea that uh, was shared. Now on the second. Pierre. Please, uh, Joaquin. Tell me one thing. Uh, do you want me to comment on the pitch right now, 
or do I sum up at the end uh, some of my notes and my ideas? Please, please be free to intervene and share what you have now. You're welcome to add things here. Okay. Uh, I think the, the, the pitch was, was done by Severio, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Severio, um, I, will I will go straight to the point. Uh, that's the first uh, meeting. Uh, please uh, don't feel too, too much, uh, I mean, uh, uh, don't feel that my speech will be too much, uh, uh, too much aggressive, okay? But um, I think I have to, to tell you some things that uh, could improve your pitch. First, I don't buy ideas. I buy solutions, okay? Don't tell me about your ideas. You know a lot of things about your project. It's very good. You are too much in depth of your ideas. And you can tell me, I mean, uh, it seems that you can, you can talk about your ideas more than five minutes, I would say one hour or something like that, because you are very enthusiastic about your ideas. That is good, but it's not the, the right moment for a pitch to explain me uh, ob uh, with ob objectivity what is your solution. So it's better to focus first on the needs that you uh, that you found in the market that your ideas could meet, okay? Start telling me what are the gaps that you find in the markets and how do you do you, do you uh, will try to cope and try to overcome that gaps with your solutions, with your innovations, okay? Uh, you talk about the features um, and innovations about the way you discover to meet the real market needs, okay? So uh, another, another comment, because you don't have too much time to, to do the pitch and you have a lot of information to deliver, it could be a good idea to support with additional information, let's say pictures, uh, some phrases, some pictograms, whatever you, you want, in a, in a block of uh, two, three slides, okay? It could help us because, I mean, uh, I don't have uh, just your, your speech. I could have also some written ideas that I can look and understand a little bit better what you are saying, okay? So it's a technique that you can use to deliver more information uh, on the same uh, amount of time, okay? Okay, perfect. I definitely took notes and I want to thank you for the criticism, very helpful. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Uh, the rest, I mean, uh, I need a little bit more to understand the idea as a whole, because you 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 talk uh, too much fast to to compromise with the five minutes, and that, that there was some some details that I cannot uh, get it. Uh, so uh, that's why I say uh, if you have some some things written, a, a kind of uh, wrap up or kind of summary of your project, could be very nice because I mean uh, improves the understanding of the of the project as a whole. Okay. Sure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joachim. I, okay. I think I'm. A, we're going to pass to the other team. I, I'm. I'm super aligned with the, the the first point from Joachim. Is in this program, we will uh, share with you that the first thing you should touch is the pain. Okay. For example, you mentioned uh, Severio one time. We want to fight the abuse of companies to young guys. We want blah blah. So you should. Tell us that first, then you hook us up about the problem that you identify, and then after you go into the, the, the product, the solution. In general, I think your pitch was okay. Too many features, I was a little bit lost as well, but it's fine, okay? You, have, you didn't have the slides, etc. but if you had to tell someone what your product is, start with the pain and then one or two features, not more, and, and try to concentrate. I think as a, as a follow-up from Joaquin, 
I would love to have you sending us perhaps some more one pager or two pager with some information, and then I can share that within uh, the group here. Okay, is that possible? Absolutely, absolutely, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for your presentation. If you have to jump out, you can jump out. Yeah. And after we're going to oh, move okay. to Thank Crowdify. So very. There's another topic that uh, maybe you uh, will get further uh, on the presentations of, of your colleagues that I would like to uh, meet, um, which is the communication pass. Uh, when we present something to, to people that doesn't know, know you or your history, your background, uh, your idea, uh, the first thing you, you should, you should uh, uh, try to get is the attention, okay? That's the first okay. very important thing is to catch the attention of your target audience. Then you should move to interest. Okay? Then you should move to desire, a kind of desire. Okay? Then you should move to action. But later on, we'll come, we'll come on on this uh, uh, framework uh, on communication pass. Okay? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. It was, the first, it was the first speech on this side. Yeah. So we have now uh, on stage, we have Crowdify. Guys, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm just quickly gonna share my screen and then we can start. So it's gonna be the same rule, five minutes max. Yes. And after you do your self-evaluation. Can you share? Yeah, do you already see it or not? No. I can share, yeah. No. You don't see just it a yet. quick comment. Like people have to pass view options and have to change okay. to a different screen. Look that you're looking at a different screen. Okay. Like Christian yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm share, sharing again. I, I no. need to stop sharing. Is it correct? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to, but it's that's it. Ah, uh, that's correct. Okay. Uh, but now you're with me, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. All right, um, then uh, I will jump in. So basically our catchphrase, as you can see it here, uh, well, uh, we, we called the project uh, Crowdify and basically what we uh, want to achieve is a blockchain-based crowd lending solution for startup funding. And uh, what the, I mean, Christian, if you jump to the next slide or uh, we already presented the team um, beforehand, so we can uh, basically skip the slide um, as we already presented ourselves. Um, what is the, the basic issue we see in the current market right now. And we divided it up into the one side of investors and the other side of for the startups. I will start with the with the startups. What is the, the current issue for, for startups that they have uh, receiving funding? So what we see is that it is proven that early stage funding is a crucial success factor for startups and that venture that is an, a possibility to, to actually help startups with that. But it is really difficult for startups right now to get um, yeah, the, the first funding. And that, of course, one uh, option would be to give up part of your equity to VC funds. But um, due to the strong negotiating power, you might have uh, um, um, yeah, some disadvantages to, to receive your funding. And then on the other sides, we have the investors that are still looking for high yield returns. And furthermore, that the individual investors don't even have access to high return venture capital investments because the entry barriers are so high. So um, that uh, there's a, no possibility for them to basically crowd together to do a small amount uh, lending to startups. Um, and that there are also high intermediary costs if you um, would want to, to achieve uh, yeah, something like that. And the solution we come up with is something that Christian is, to, uh, is going to present you in the next slide. Exactly, thank you very much. So the solution would be our Cardano-based crowd lending platform for startups. Uh, if you hear that for the first time, it may sound a bit complicated, but in the core, it's quite simple. Uh, you as an individual investor could provide microloans to startups, and then after a while, you get back your coupon payment as a reward and the principal payment uh, that the startup got initially from you. All of this would be based on a blockchain, especially uh, or specifically on a blockchain that is called Cardano. And the Cardano is a proof of base, a proof of stake based blockchain network, which a lot of advantages for a project. 
It's transparent and efficient. So transactions run very fast and with a high degree of automation, we want to introduce an element that we call wisdom of the crowds, uh, which basically would let me introduce it with an example. So you as a startup want to get 1 million of funding and then a lot of individual investors would collect those 1 million euros. And if the individual investors together achieve this goal of collecting the fund, then the startup would receive the funding. So we have the wisdom of the crowds here that approves the startup. Um, another element is the elimination of subjective loan approval that is specifically important for startups because if some good ideas can't be pursued due to the subjective loan approval, it's a pity. And uh, on top of that, it's decentralized and secure, which means that the deposits that the investors make can be collected on a very, very secure decentralized way. And they can get the loans and funds back also in a very decentralized way. And that's the solution. And now we are coming to the competitors and I give the word to Philip. Thanks, Christian. Okay, so let's just take a quick glimpse at the market and our main competitors as we see them. Uh, I think you guys have all heard about Aux Money. They basically make P2P credits, which uh, can be seen as a competitor because they give loans to fund uh, to founders. Then we have Mintus and Companisto, which are basically crowd VCs. So they collect <clears throat> funds from individual investors, and we do, but uh, act as a VC. So they also take advantage of startups, of their negotiation power, etc. And they approve the ideas for you. So you cannot directly invest in a startup that you want. And that's basically the point that we can offer. So you can see something, some startup that you like, and you can invest in it and yeah, become part of their success story. And furthermore, the things that set us apart is the decentralization aspect and the transparency aspect, because you don't have to trust us. You just have to trust the startup. And if you give you if you give you money to Ox Money or to Mintos or to Companisto, you have to trust those platforms, and this is not necessary for us. Furthermore, we are, we we offer debt uh, giving and not equity giving, which is easier for the startups and also easier for the for the investors. Then it's kind of a P two P, as I as I described before. You can fund your startups, which all those other platforms allow you as well. And what we also offer is kind of a knowledge hub where where the uh, data and information about a startup, how they see them, what they want to do is, is already accumulated and helps you make a decision for your startup investment. So as you can see, there are many things, many advantages that we have in common with our competitors, but there are basically two to four unique selling points that we offer that our competitors can't, which we think, which basically makes it um, from our point of view a necessary solution for a problem that we see. And uh, yeah, that's, that's called at the bottom line. Thank you for listening. And we're happy to answer your questions. Thanks. Thank you, guys. You were just running a little bit out of time. So um, um, let's, let's go your self-evaluation. So if you want to, let's go back to your first slide, the cover slide, please. Your first slide, okay. And then you can, um, you can uh, exactly, you can answer questions. So tell me what you think about your pitch. Tell me the reason why you chose to have each of you pitching and et cetera. So self-evaluation. I can start. Um, first of all, all of us pitching, we are one team. We are equally participating to this project. So we thought this should be mirrored in the pitch. And second of all, I think we can still sharpen our wording and uh, get it uh, more to the top of our tongues. But overall, I think the idea is solid. Um, the, the problem that we identify is solid and the solution that we identified is even more solid. So yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that this idea um, can have an impact. I agree with Philip, especially what we were talking about before, uh, to catch the attention of the investor right away is something that we could uh, work on more because our first slide would be actually the introduction of the team or the problem. So if we would have a phrase or something that catches the attention of the investor or the uh, yeah audience overall would be would be better. So yeah, maybe we could also include something similar to that. 
Yeah, maybe the, the concluding words from, from my side, uh, I think uh, for the first time that we set this pitch uh, up uh, all together, it was uh, quite all right. But I, I think um, the, the good part was, I think we addressed some of the, the points we discussed before, like the problem statement and then showing the, the solution, although we can still work on basically clarifying what we are actually going to do also for, let's say, individuals, investors who didn't really uh, hear about, uh, let's say, crowd lending, crowdfunding, P2P, blockchain before. Yeah. Thank you. Joaquin, do you want to say something, Paulo or other people, if you want to jump in? I have some notes I'll, I'll mention after. Yeah, uh, I could say that uh, this uh, team uh, had the, the miraculous uh, word solution. Any investor or any uh, anyone that uh, isn't interested in in uh, this kind of projects will will get attached immediately to a slide that that has that that words. You guys, you find a solution for startup funding. That's good. That's a very good uh, uh, starting point. Okay. Um, I think it's okay. I mean, to have uh, three four slides, no much more than that, to support your speech your pitch, um, maybe you can uh, spare a little bit of time just for a wrap up at the end, just say, okay, at the end of our, our pitch, as a conclusion, as ne next steps, as whatever, the main idea is that, the objective is that, and we want to do this, okay? Quite simple, okay. But uh, I like it. I mean, I, I like the way you present it. Uh, they have, you have rhythm. You have a good, good uh, expression, um, uh, and the way you 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 present it's quite uh, objective. At the end, I don't know if everyone understands um, the topic because I mean you are talking about new things like bro blockchain based. Uh, crowdfunding and that's all so you should also try to uh, discomplicate a little bit this kind of new new words new um, new things new technology okay but I like it can I, can I pose a question back maybe yeah why not uh, my question would be you say that we should decomplex it so for example explain blockchain or something uh, my my hypothesis would be it depends on the audience that we are talking to. Sure. And if as, I mean if if the, if we're talking to investors, for example, mm -hmm. they should know about blockchain if they if they want to talk to us. So, yes, you are right. Absolutely right. Okay. I'm not an investor. <laughs> That's why I'm talking. To. Okay, okay. Okay. No. Then uh, then we're on the same page. Uh, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. yeah. Paul, do you want to add something, or anybody else? Yes, yeah, I, 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 I could have. I, I think it's it's a best to work, and uh, I think the best thing to to get a deeper analysis and uh, give some comments. It's better to to work together. Uh, I think it's a, a beginning, and uh, I I don't have too much comments. It's a great idea. It's a great area to discuss and work. But uh, I, I think it's better to work together and they, and uh, give some feedback later because mm. it's a complex topic and it, you know, of course it, it it includes a lot of information and uh, it's it's great to have this project. Thank you. Thanks, Paulo. Any other comments from the peer teams, the participants? Yeah, I want to say something. Um, First of all, congrats on a strong and professional pitch. I really liked it and the way you presented it. And I think you could benefit from maybe having a high level concept, for instance, saying it's Kickstarter, but with a skin in the game or something to really drive the point home. And I have one question for you guys. Do you have any collaterals in place in case uh, that the company defaults or something? Is there a security for the investors to get their uh, money back? Uh, no, so far we want to do it without collateral because with blockchain, it would be uh, maybe we would have to think about that again, but so far it's planned without uh, collateral. To, to uh, maybe add on this, 
basically, first of all, to give you the catchphrase, we are doing P2P lending for startups on the blockchain. And um, maybe that, that gives a bit more the ring to it. And second of all, to, this, to your second point, I think if you look at all those P2P lending platforms, you, you get high returns for the high risk that you take. And the high risk that you take is based in not having a collateral. As right now, our working thesis is to uh, basically mirror this, um, this mechanism. We're not, we're not trying to implement collaterals because it would be, I think, not only regulatory, but also from a coding perspective, super complex. Therefore, we try to keep it simple. Uh, and, and also, uh, startups often have problems with collateral, which is why they don't get funding. Because if a startup can provide a lot of collateral, they can go to a normal bank and maybe get funding there. But our idea is also for startups that don't get uh, funding in the normal, let's say, in the traditional way. So uh, the idea of introducing collateral would be interesting, but I think it would also uh, destroy a bit the original idea. Okay. Makes total sense. It was just some question that came up, but I think with your peer review, it basically validates the idea to some extent. And yeah, I think uh, it's a decent idea. Thank you for the question, yeah. Thank you, guys. In the interest of time, I just uh, wanted to add, and we're going to move to another team, is, Philippe, that's, that's correct. You're assuming that when you pitch, people know. I think you could be perhaps doing kind of a layer around for dummy people, especially when you're going to pitch. Uh, and I'm not saying that the jury will be dummy. I'm saying that it's going to mix. It's going to be a mix of people. So sometimes what's happening is that people tell a story, And you, know, you tell a story about the startup that the tries to raise, blah, blah, they were not able. And then, you know, we have about uh, two thirds of the startup in very early stage with this same problem, according to this data. And uh, after you move to your proposed solution, I will have also a wrap up. And the thing that perhaps we don't have time to discuss, but some of the guys that are playing in this field may or not be, may or may not be legal in some jurisdiction they may open or not etc so you're gonna to have to check if all the jurisdiction in europe are applicable if you have some specific things or features that you need to apply in one country or the other so um, we can discuss about that later which is is the jurisdiction limiting uh, your solution or this is applicable in all the jurisdiction in europe and other places okay so that's what i wanted to mention Thank you. Thank you very much for the input. I think it's important to to uh, check this. But uh, since Christian basically also has a lot of insights into the central bank, at least in Germany, I think uh, we have the right environment to to check this thoroughly and then follow up on this. But thanks for for pointing it out. I, I want to mention a, a, a startup called Student Finance. It's in Portugal. They have been developing, developing the complete idea from grant to, you know, blah, blah, and they're not able to operate in Portugal <laughs> because the, the regulation doesn't allow them to do that. And they've been doing, you know, they have been invested, etc. So they want to launch first in Holland and after they mobile. So just be careful right at the beginning that you don't have this limitation. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Who's next? There are no takers, I would continue, that's fine. Please, cool. the floor is yours, Leonard. Cool, give me a second, I'm just gonna share my screen, screen, screen. Um, let me know if it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, you have five minutes. Cool, okay, gonna jump right in. So the name is Whisper and it's supposed to be a cashback model that benefits both companies and customers. So the idea started with a problem. Last year, I joined a friend's startup. It's a really cool product, like it's hygiene on the go. Um, I really love the product and we started to try it and sell it in Munich. And we didn't have any marketing budget at all. Um, the product is not self-explanatory at all. And the few ads we had here and there, they didn't generate any uplift in sales. So basically, most sales that we had came from word of mouth and just friends and parents basically that bought the product. So everybody that knew of the product loved it, but basically nobody knew about it. 
So uh, long story short, the uh, product failed, unfortunately, which led me to do a little bit of research. And there we have both companies and customers. So in 2022, for companies, the brand, uh, the main goal is to raise brand awareness. The challenges they face in doing so is to constantly and consistently um, create creative content and post that content on social media. And also with the advent of iOS 14, for instance, uh, it's very hard to track the right customers because tracking is really prohibited now. Uh, so there's a declining organic reach and also there's a need for increased social media marketing spend. So long story short, a third of all marketing campaigns fail because they don't create brand awareness or boost sales. For the customers, basically everybody probably does not really like ads. And so there's low trust in ads and a long information process in order to find the right product. So uh, online, there's an abundance of products which leads to choice overload and less satisfied consumers. So they don't trust ads. Who do uh, customers really turn to? I guess um, it's probably resonating with you as well. 83% of all customers trust recommendations from their friends and family, which is followed by online reviews. So I don't know if you use social media, but I certainly do. And this is what my feed basically looks like. Um, friends and acquaintances essentially endorsing brands and products. So the underlying reasoning is here that they want to show what they have. They're proud of the experience they're having. And my idea is now that those customers that bought something, they post a picture, post a video of it, and they just basically tag the brand or the restaurant for that matter where they are and basically showcasing the product and the tech whisper, which is the company's name as well, in order to receive some cash back. So what are the upsides of this approach? First of all, consumers have visibility of brands and products and companies gain access to a homogenous target group that they couldn't reach before because when I share something to my friends, you can be pretty sure that they're like-minded um, the way that I am. So if I know that's a product that my friend really likes, I'm automatically more inclined to use it, which creates social proof and more trustworthy advertisement for those companies. Also, I don't know if you use TikTok, seeing the product in action um, and the um, enhanced trust leads to a shorter product discovery process because, for instance, I know, oh, okay, my friend has the Apple Watch 7. I can just ask him about it because I'm not quite sure, do I need the seven, the five, and so on. So also getting cashback reduces the need to look for discounts, which also saves some time and money as well. Also, these users then become brand ambassadors, essentially, and constantly create creative content for those companies, alleviating a huge pain for those companies. So wrapping this up, how's it working? It's three simple steps. Basically, um, um, customers can either browse in-app or organically discover uh, recommendations on their own social media feed. Then when they found the perfect product, they can buy it from the partner brand or store or restaurant, whatever. And lastly, they only need to upload a story or post on social media, tag the brand and whisper, and also upload the receipt. And then they get a cash back on their purchase. And yeah leaving satisfied customers. Thanks, that's basically it. Okay, thanks, 428, congrats. Uh, so questions, suggestions, please. So um, first of all, great pitch. I think you, you um, also had a, had a great structure, also good uh, catch. Um, Catchphrase or starting with the with the idea and problem that you that you also faced face personally. Just for me, for for clarification, I mean, so this is basically the approach you you are doing is basically an ex post affiliate. So you don't post the the <laughs> the the picture of the product with the link, and then only if the user buys the product, then he gets some some cashback. But you basically after the product has been bought, um, you want the user who posted the picture to be compensated for the for the advertisement he does by the company. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of a reverse affiliate, as you put it, because you don't have to buy over the link, but basically it's just a promise on a future sale, basically. Yeah. Do, you, do you see an issue um, with the, let's say, company's readiness to pay you, for example, for, for the marketing after the product has been bought? Because they, they yeah. 
Uh, yeah, the idea, obviously, it's a great uh, question. First and foremost, obviously, it's a two-sided marketplace. So we have to get these companies on board first. Um, I already have some arguments in place because it's probably a much lower return on ad spend as uh, compared to traditional marketing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we have to have these companies on board first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. No, I just wanted to, to make sure that, that you have this, this question in mind, because basically for if you do the, the reverse affiliate, because for affiliate, the company doesn't have any risk because the purchase has been done. They just have to basically remove a, a short slice. But yeah, it may, makes sense, your, your argumentation as well. Thanks. Great questions. Thanks. Uh, that's one of the benefits of having like-minded people to comment to each other. So I think it's super interesting. Next, um, uh, other questions or suggestions for Leonard, for Whisper? Just, sorry. I just have a cl quick clarification question, if I might. Um, so you, you basically say uh, you get cash back for each sale, right? So not for the reach, but for the sale. Okay, so if, you, if two friends buy the product, do you get the same cash back as if like five friends buy the product, for example? And the idea is like cashback is a thing, but nobody really uses it because you have to use an intermediary and then you get, like, yeah. let's say 5% or something. The idea is now um, that you just buy the product and if you want to share the post uh, or you want to share a picture of the product, no worries. It's like, um, I don't know, it's an additional 10% off or something and you just have to hand in the receipt and you get it automatically after the, we verified the purchase. That's basically it. But we have to have, uh, obviously, th those collaborations in place with the companies before that. Um, not quite sure if I answered the question. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you did kind of, but also you didn't in a way. So my, my question basically was your output. So you post it and then two, then two of your friends buy, buy this and then you get 10% cash back. Ah, no, no. Okay. No, that's the idea. It's not affiliate. It's not okay. based on who buys it. That's not the thing at all. You buy it, you post it, you get 10% back. That's ah, it. Okay. So you, pay for the, buy it. so you pay for the reach then. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the idea here is like, if you use TikTok, I'm not quite sure. Um, there are people with 100 followers and their videos get 500,000 likes, like for real. And it's, yeah. Uh, it's an easy way to for a company to spread their chances of virality and to just um, reach lots of like-minded people, which is uh, very very capital intensive right now when doing online marketing. Okay, I, under I understand. So, but but um, yeah, in my experience, they they rather buy reach. But I, I, I see the point, and I think it's it's a great idea, really. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for, I mean, for it, clarification. It doesn't have have to be maybe mutually exclusive because my follow up question would be then: Do you get a different cashback depending on the reach you have? No, uh, okay. there would be a certain uh, limitation in place. For instance, let's say one hundred followers at minimum, but okay. then it's capped. But it doesn't make a difference if I post it to my, let's say, five followers or to uh, 25,000. No, it shouldn't be. Okay, okay. Okay, excellent. Thanks. In the interest of time, guys, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll move to the, the next team. Um, Can we go next? Yeah, Philip, please. You're the one, yeah. Okay. I'm going to just share my screen. Okay. Hi, guys. We are Gaia. And let's dig in. So this is the team. We are now already eight people. Five are taking the um, are, so, are in the forward program. Um, and we started by actually making a huge survey in Lisbon and figured out that 60% of Lisbon students want to be involved in making a positive impact. Um, we digged more in and figured out and trying to figure out what are they lacking in order to create a positive impact and figured out that 70% of them lack guidance. Uh, 64 also say that people from, they need people from different backgrounds and 63 that they're lacking an impact community. Um, so we created, we, we started to uh, structure this and figure out that there are three challenges that we want to solve. One is the silence of universities, which means that we have a big problem because there is between different universities and between the faculties of the same universities, there is no exchange of students and of knowledge. And we believe that to actually achieve great results, we need interdisciplinary um, knowledge. The second one is the limited knowledge on the impact topics. 
So on one side, to have this more in-depth knowledge about the specific topics, and on the others also to have, uh, in order to people to really understand, we believe you have to have a concrete problems that you are able to solve, not this wide idea that is so wide you don't know where to start. And thirdly, a lack of community. So a community and a place where the students can work together and focus on impact and, and they think of ideas and develop them together. Um, so we, we created this solution, solution of a community in Lisbon focused on learning and tackling today's most pressing social problems. Uh, so we are a, an external independent organization, which is so not connected to any of the universities or faculties because we believe that we have to be that in order to break these silos. Um, we, are, we want to build a diverse impact community. So of young professionals with diverse background, this is our goal and work, make them an opportunity to work on real world problems. Um, so finding solutions and um, su support them into bringing them to reality. Through all this process, we believe that we can achieve our mission of changing their mindsets. So what are we offering? We are offering a weekly community events. So each week, one to eight hour events depends on what. So every, everything from talk, talks, workshops, social events, uh, hackathons, and they're open for everyone. And we also want to offer an eight week accelerator program once per year. It's a full time accelerator and we join the application process and it takes time during the semester break, so in the summer. Um, what is our overall goal? Is to impact startups, so to, fair, to see how many startups actually go through, to change the mindsets, which would be, I would say, our core one. And we are wanted to do this by, to see how the, the mindset of participants change in the long term. So also, if they're just gonna be working on a completely different project and in their jobs to basically have sustainability and impact in their mind and create this impact community we want to we will which we're going to measure by the size of our alumni network and student network so we're already designing a prototype in uh, in the beginning of april where we're going to connect uh, students from uh, teams from nova sb and with 25 design students so that we're going to try to see how this collaboration um, of different backgrounds can work and this is basically our value proposition. So we have diverse targets. So the whole spectrum universities, we want to have impact energy. Uh, we are Lisbon based. We believe that we can prove that this can be scaled over all over the world. And we, we are answering to the urgency of the young generation. And we believe we can provide an opportunity and an environment where it's a big willingness to learn. So, okay. And um, there is a long way to hide a long road ahead, so let's accelerate. Here's also our web page, which is still in a bit of an unfancy form, but yeah, thank you. Thanks, for minute 23, thanks a lot. Con um, if you have to go, Philip, and other people are here, you can go, because I know you're in a hurry. I, I will wait for until we're done with our- and Okay, then I will leave. guys, any questions, please? Is it going to be a non-profit or for-profit organization? Uh, we want to start as a non-profit. If we figure out that this is a really successful framework, then maybe in the future in other cities it will be for-profit. But as an idea is to start as a non-profit. Okay, cool. Sounds interesting. So actually, it's really cool to, sorry, um, whoever wants, it's also really cool to have your guys' opinion because you are also people who could be interested in something like what you're doing because we are basically students that develop your project, want to do some, maybe not everyone in the impact community, but still. I'm sorry, someone wanted to say something. I, I have a question. So you, you're going to offer those workshops and those accelerator program and... I mean, it, to me, it sounds like a communication platform or channel where, where just people meet and chat and you have events, no. right? Mm -hmm. We would really like actually to be a physical space. So we are also working on having a physical space, yeah. which would be there all the time, because we believe that there is still a difference between these online platforms and having actually a space where people can meet and work and network <laughs> together and just have an, a place where this impact community of students of Lisbon could be in one place. Okay, and is it going to be for free then? So, for example, just the, the participation? The, 
in the idea is that there would be maybe some month, like yearly membership, but very low and in general for free. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. But maybe one last question, if I might. Um, I just, I, I just, on top of my head, I had the comparison to this 180 consulting stuff, which is basically a social impact consultancy, and they have the same structure. With they have one mm -hmm. central hub, and then they have in every city they have one dependency. So maybe that helps you to look, have a look at it, and structure wise. Yeah, cool. We will look. I think what's our biggest difference to what we found so far is that we really want to work with students, and there are a lot of hubs, there are a lot of different ideas, but nothing is focused on students, okay. which we um, believe could be a nice opportunity. Understood. Thanks. Other and questions? If, Last if question. I if I can add to Philip, it's like what we were thinking is to start as a nonprofit for now, figure out how it all goes, since it's like our first first year doing this. And then our idea would be in future to scale it up, as you said, to like different countries and have it in the main cities with like main universities as a concept, which maybe can even work as a for profit if companies would be interested in joining it. Uh, um, can I just ask, uh, maybe I, I also missed the point, but uh, the where is the, the core difference between uh, Gaia and the uh, student club? Student you club. Go? Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead. So, so we, we, we're external from university. We're combining, we're combining for students from different universities. So that's the thing okay. that is like really missing. Okay, so you're connecting not only in one university, but Catholic. Exactly, Nova, Catholica, and any kind of student that wants to come from, if you're a design student, artist, um, mechanic, like you can come and join a diverse team. Nice, nice idea, thank you. Thanks. Uh, how, how, would you, how would you want to reach the student? Because one, one issue could be that if you specifically say you want, don't want to be associated with, uh, with each uh, university separately, that you might lack a bit of backing from the faculties that they want to promote you or, or however. Um, so we are already, I think some of it will also be done over universities because at the end of the day, it's also in the interest of universities to provide this for the students. We are already contacting, we were already contacting like student unions and stuff like that. Uh, and we are also going to be doing the uh, road shows for so on different fac universities and faculties and also we believe that in the one, okay, later also the word of mouth, but um, we will start by going to entrepreneurship classes and going with these teams. And we believe that from there on, we can start to reach, to spread our network. Okay. Thanks, Philip. Uh, sorry, guys. I know a lot of valuable questions and suggestions. Let's um, call the next team um, for full presentation. Thank you, guys. Okay, so uh, may I go? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, so as I as I said in my intro in the beginning, I'm really into sports, all kind of sports. And a couple of years from now, um, I started playing paddle, uh, which which is becoming super popular in in all Europe, but especially here in Portugal, its um, its popularity has boosted uh, since like maybe five years. Uh, and yeah, I started playing it with uh, with my friends in university, um, and we would play like only occasionally. But as I started playing and playing, playing and getting better, I would like to play to play more and more. But what I found out was that, as it is a sport played by four people, uh, sometimes it would be really difficult to find to find four friends to and to to schedule uh, a match where we would we would all be able to go. Uh, and so, uh, for example, I would wake up one day, I would really feel like playing paddle, but then I would really struggle to find other three people that could match my my schedule. So we could only schedule a match like for a week from from now, and that was really was really annoying because uh, I would I would uh, really want to play as soon as possible. Uh, and so I I thought that there was an an opportunity to launch. Um, a social network kind of a social network where people could connect um, and share their passion and interest for the game where people could uh, meet other players which which i think uh, it's it has also become increasingly popular the 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 factor of meeting people on, online and sharing interests 
uh, also uh, with uh, the pandemic that we all live. I think it's it's really normal nowadays to to connect online and meet people online. And uh, yeah, I thought there was a, a gap in the market um, and I really wanted to to address it. Um, this solution is it also uh, exists already exists in in uh, the United Kingdom with a, an app called Racket Pal, which is really successful, but it only works there. And there is another one smaller in in Sweden, uh, which was also a, a huge success. Um, the difference is that both of these uh, apps are they are not registered and they are uh, all free. My idea was to have a, a standard um, a standard pack uh, and then also a premium version, uh, a paid version, which would have more more features. For example, the the standard uh, app would be to to connect uh, players to match uh, to create matches uh, to open a, a chat where all players could could uh, talk with each other. And then in the premium, we could have like um, a tournament version where we could create groups and tournaments for people to to play and uh, arrange their matches. Also, we could have a um, uh, um, functionality where uh, users could book the courts directly in the app, which would facilitate a lot their their uh, their work. Um, and and yeah, I would I would really like to to hear your opinions on. On this, I think. Thanks, that thanks Bernardo. Three minutes, fifteen or twenty. So thanks for that. Um, let, what do you think about this presentation, Bernardo? Uh, well, it was my it was my my first pitch uh, ever, and so it it may have been quite confusing, but I tried to be really uh, straight straight to the point. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I don't have time for comments, but after I, I can I can tell you uh, other other suggestions here from from the other people uh, from the, the the participants. Good idea, and I think there's truly a need in the market, and it's already validated, as you said, in other countries. So that's a great place to start. Uh, in terms of business model, I would think maybe not charging the user, but just charging um, the the places for commissions basically when courts get booked uh, you could do it like uh, the fork basically to ensure 100 percent um capacity and yeah just get a fee from the from the courts basically yeah yeah thanks other comments no i think if you say it was your first pitch for that i think it was was really good uh, also really understandable and i think you could even Use paddle as your MVP and then expand to other sports that also uh, yeah. also uh, yeah looking for yeah. players. Yeah, that was the idea. Perfect. Other comments, so I can comment or no? I think what you did, Bernardo, was quite difficult, but you've been able to do it. You've been pitching without slide, and you are structured. Even I think the next step you should have perhaps some supporting slide to help us out, yeah, but it was quite well structured for a first pitch without slides. So congrats on that. I think there's a huge need for that in, uh, in this sport. I'm not a, a player per se, but I, I mean, some of the people, the senior buddies you will, you will talk to, have been playing quite a lot and they validated the need for that. So I think one of the points that you're gonna have to decide is where you get the money from. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Leonard was saying, he's thinking you should not be doing by on a, on a B2C, probably should go B2B with the clubs. I don't know, this is something you're gonna have to validate. Mm -hmm. But I think this is an interesting idea. Uh, you may benefit also perhaps like all the guys that are alone in the team, perhaps to get other people on board to help you out. And, mm -hmm. and we'll, we're here for that as well, but uh, congrats for the first pitch, okay? Thank and, you. Um, any other points so I can move to the other, other team? Thank you, guys. So let's move to Katten, please. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Excellent. You have five minutes. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, introducing the talent swap. Uh, sorry. We hear you and we see the slides, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm not uh, moving then. One second, please. Good? Yeah. Sorry. 
Uh, let's start with the problem. Uh, living in the globalized and dynamic world, it has never been easier to access any type of knowledge via online sources. These sources are frequently free of charge, and young professionals can continuously improve their skill set and knowledge to adjust to a new job roles, duties, or even new industries. Therefore, it has never been harder to find, to attract, but also to retain the talent. Employees are nowadays seeking for flexibility, a remote friendly position, digital nomadic lifestyle, which represent a big threat for the companies investing in their talent development. On the other hand, companies employing talent throughout the year do not need their skills and talent all the time. With this premise in mind, many ideas open up. So if the company has an unused talent potential in a certain period, and if it has a certain idea which another type of talent is currently seeking for, that company could start with talent swap initiative, either with the same company globally or by establishing collaboration with different companies. Here's the story. This is Mark. He is 30 year old IT professional working in the consulting industry in the US. He likes his job, but sometimes he, he longs for traveling experience and excitement. In short, he longs for something new. The company hiring him does not efficiently deploy his talent throughout the year, and therefore his job sometimes becomes quite monotonous. The company engages in education traveling swap initiative that is integrating the tourism aspect as well. This is our solution. We have companies to continuously enrich the talent they have in-house, but also to offer their talent professional and career development opportunities all over the globe. We are Erasmus for companies enabling them to swap and enrich their talent. Our mission. Our mission is to stimulate employees' productivity and motivation by applying a novel and exciting approach. We offer a platform that enables exchange of talent and education opportunities among collaborating companies. By doing so, we reach our goal of continuously developing employees' knowledge and broadening their skill set. At the same time, we reduce the cost of classical employee training we foster exchange and improve both employees' companies' productivity. For companies, this is an opportunity to stand out as an employer offering something fresh and innovative for the employees. For the talent, it is an exchange experience offering them a chance to constantly grow career-wise and personal life-wise. In short, it gives them a chance to be better than the rest. Thank you. Thanks. It was about uh, 3.15 minutes. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Comments, please. Uh, so I, I like the idea and also the, the story you used with, with Mark. Um, I mean, maybe the business consultant isn't the, the best, <laughs> the best uh, uh, example because I think they, they have <laughs> a lot of work to do and maybe not not as much uh, free capacity but it could be it could be the case also uh, just one one uh, tip for you maybe uh, you could have a look at the platform uh, Cobrainer I think they launched in Germany and maybe some other market and they basically do also do a talent rotation platform but uh, intra company so they do it within the company within different departments where you can basically upload your, your profile and then get staffed on different projects but what you're doing is basically this but between company, the way I understood, so you could look at, at this company maybe uh, if it helps you. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Other comments? No? Okay. So thank you for the presentations. Um, I, I like the, the the catchy phrase you had you had here about we are we are the Erasmus of the blah blah blah. Okay, so I think it's interesting. Um, so let's let's move it to closure. We have been here together for the last three hours, and uh, I'd like to um, provide you with the last slide. So let me see what I have here in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. This is this one, and I'm here. So first of all. Thanks for presenting. I took some notes. I have additional um, things I was uh, putting together. 
and it's going to help me to see how you guys are progressing. Um, I'll, the next slide is this one. So here, and that's the next step. So um, as I mentioned, I'm your contact point. If you need anything, drop me a mail. It's, it's going to be my pleasure to help you out and, and make you feel comfortable here. Number one, ensure you have no logistic issues about the dates, etc. cetera. Um, we want you to grow here to get information. Uh, you may not be available in some of the session, et cetera, but let us know uh, before so we don't match you with people from outside and it doesn't work, et cetera. So please let us know about the dates, especially that I, I had to change some, some of the dates. So thanks um, for looking at that. The second thing is, uh, there is one thing we need to do by law, and I sent you a document before, is you need to uh, let us use your image. I know some teams already answered, but please, for the others, make sure that you let us use the, the right for the image because we're going to be promoting you on social media, etc. Okay. The second thing is every week, we're going to be having a post on our feed about one of the team. Lennart already sent me a picture of, uh, of him and some information. Um, um, we have also um, Cradify that did that. For the others, please don't hesitate to do that because it's going to help you to have more reach. So if you can send me pictures about you, um, uh, it would be a plus. Okay. Then the third point is get familiar with the tools, especially Discord. If you have any issue again, I'm here to help. Get to know your buddy mentors and your senior mentors. So what's going to happen after is uh, I'll, I'll get the feedback of the senior mentors. We'll see how we're going to split uh, the teams. And then it's going to be the big family uh, with uh, having these people with you, uh, helping you out. During the next week, I'm going to be uh, posting in Discord videos, linked to some points, etc. And um, I will also be working on getting you industry mentors for the next um, session and the content that um, you will get for uh, March 19th, okay? Um, the main objective of the next session is to make sure that you're actually doing something that people want, okay? Uh, if you work on something that nobody wants, uh, it's not worth spending your time on that, okay? Again, and to conclude before I pass to... Uh, Joaquin or Paolo or other any people, any other participant, things will not always go according to plan. I'm just telling you that again. So thanks for uh, keeping that in mind, helping us out. It was a blast for me. I really enjoy this kind of interaction. We're here to interact with you guys and help when you need. Um, this is your program. We're here to support you. So Again, a big blast today, and, and thank you on my side. So before I close, I'll pass on to perhaps Joaquin and Paolo, and uh, after we call it a day, guys. Joaquin, we don't hear you. Okay, now, thank you, guys. You, you are amazing. You have uh, very good challenges. Uh, I heard about uh, very nice ideas. Uh, you have a lot of things to do, but uh, the, the the essential you have it. It's the the um, the aim to innovate and to do things uh, that could be um, important for the new world. Let's say. So uh, I'm here to as a buddy to help you uh, whenever you want. Uh, I'm just on a dis distance of a phone call or. WhatsApp, email, whatever you want. Uh, so uh, challenge me also. Uh, as you understood, I'm a guy that, uh, as a buddy, uh, I should do that role that uh, uh, interpel you, uh, question you, uh, uh, provoke some polemics about the, the way you are thinking about the, the ideas and your project. Uh, but at the end, um what could be my aim is to help you to do the, the evolution from the idea as a scratch uh, project to a, a more mature project that you can present to anyone that could uh, be uh, your partner in financing uh, 
the idea that you uh, you sought one day. So I'm here to help you, okay? As a buddy. Thank you, Joaquim. Paulo, do you want to add something? Yeah, just thank you for uh, uh, being on this program. I, I'll wait for, for, I'm waiting for the decision uh, on which uh, team or teams we could help and I'm available to work with them and uh, to, to, to do a better presentations next, next time. So thank you, Pierre. Thanks thank a lot, you. Paulo, for your time. Thanks, Joaquin, for your time. I know it's, it's a lot of time, dedication. Thank you to give back to Catholica. So thanks a lot. To the participants, again, big hand to you guys. It's three hours, so thanks a lot. We into this project together, it's to this program. So let's share, let's discuss. You can discuss with other teams, etc. I'm going to put you some information. Next time, we're going to be online together, all together. It's going to be March 19th. I'm looking forward uh, to see you here on the same venue on, uh, on, on, on Zoom. Lennart, please. Yeah, thanks, guys, for the session. I have one really quick, uh, stupid question to close things off. My Discord username, is it my email or is it the number? It's the email, right? No, no, the Discord username is the stuff with the dashes, with the numbers. Okay, with the numbers. Yeah, that's what I need, okay? Cool, thanks. Cool. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a nice what is left for the weekend. Take care in every location you are. Bye-bye, thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, bye.